hello, hello. What's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Monday to you all. Good to see you, good to see you. Good to see ya. What is up? Dylan Hunter, Insane Krusty's A Bright Light Variant Variant. Michael, Fat Master, Dark Infinite. How is everyone doing today? Oh, man, we're gonna have some fun today. Over the weekend, on the YouTube, I did a video about a, about my favorite decks to come out of Modern Horizons, and this is on the list. Oh, this deck is so sweet. It's got Hapatra. It's got Hapatra. It's got Yagmas. This is just such a sweet, fun deck, so I am, I'm pretty excited about getting to play this deck. We also got a backup. We we have Yagmas Hospital to start with. We also have Tooth and Nail, which we didn't get to before, but it is a modern day because, big announcement if you missed last stream, tomorrow is, a, is our viewer submitted battle, our viewer battle. So if you've been waiting and wanting to actually play against me, tomorrow's stream is the time to do it. Gonna play his standard, gonna play historic, and all of it against you. So, uh, so yes, if you want to join in on the viewer battle stream tomorrow, uh, well, I'll remind you of this as we go along, but here's what I would ask. All you gotta do is send me an email, mention the viewer battle stream in the title, so, or the heading, so I know what it is, and give me your arena name and number, and, uh, in what format you wanna play. And if you email me, you will be at the top of the list. Also, we'll grab some people from stream, just from the chat, if, uh, there is time, but if you wanna be guaranteed, well, not guaranteed, maybe 200 people do this, but if you wanna be at the top of the list, email me, first come, first serve, and then whoever's in the chat, if you don't email me, uh, we'll get to it if, uh, if we have a chance. So, But today, it's a modern day. We're playing Yagmas Hospital. Maybe some Tooth and Nail. Where's the old Porter Yagmas? I don't have old Porter Yagmas yet. It's on my it's on my to-do list. We also got some Wizards news. Uh, we got the rest of Historic Anthology 5, which this actually looks like a good anthology. Compared to Historic Anthology 4, which, oh my god, it was so bad. What do you think about commands in Historic? Would you like to have Tarkir Dragonlords in Historic as well? Uh, Dramoka, Ojitaya Tark would be really sweet. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised we haven't got the Dragonlords yet, but I assume we'll get them sometime. I think they're fine for the format. I think this is actually a pretty good Historic Anthology. We have all the commands. The commands, I was a little nervous they weren't going to put in the good ones, but Coligan's Command, that's a legit card. That's probably the best command. Atarka's Command, Seems really good in Historic Gruel. Uh, tomorrow's stream, same time as today, 2 p.m. Eastern time. So exact same time as it is uh, as it is right now, but 24 hours in the future. So uh, Atarka's Command, Coligan's Command, huge. Dramoka's Command, pretty good. The other two, they're fine. They have their uses, but not the most exciting. So those are all big additions. We got all the Praetors, including Elish Norn, which is a big one. That is a big addition. Arachalypse! Welcome to the visual. Thank you so much for your subscription. Be super for you. Elish Norn, really strong reanimation target. Just locks Aggrodex out of the game. Jinga Taxius, fun reanimation target. The others, they're okay, but they're not super duper good. I think Elish Norn and I guess maybe Jin are the two that are most interesting to me. Now we got a bunch of stuff that might not look exciting, but it really is. Like, Dragonstorm is gonna be super fun. It probably won't be good, but it'll be fun. Grizzly Salvage is the glue that holds together graveyard decks. Into the North, we actually have a Rampant Growth in Historic, finally, if you're willing to play Snowlands, even Rampant Growth with Upside, because you can get Snow Dual Lands. That's gonna be a big deal for Ramp-style decks. We got good sideboard cards. Stifle. Stifle. All right, people. So, a little, little rat, little rat. Just tiny little rat. And then we'll do reminders. Then we're going to play Vodder today. <sighs> I've had like a million people tell me this. And I just got to get this out of the way. Stifle is not an answer to Thassa's Oracle. It is not going to stop the combo. It is not going to do it. Here's why. I will give you uh, a few reasons why that is not actually an answer to the Oracle Pack combo. Uh, answer number, answer number one, the chemist. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Most enjoyable three months of magic. That's super exciting. Vacation almost over. Starting my new job as a biochemical engineer. Can
congratulations, Akemis. Your Twitch name is actually very accurate. So I'm excited about Stifle for fun, but if it was going to be an answer to Thousand Oracle, for one thing, we already have Tails End. It's Stifle plus for one more mana. That doesn't stop Thassa's Oracle. A real counter spell stops Thassa's Oracle. Those haven't exactly worked as stopping Thassa's Oracle. And Stifle's really narrow, so I don't think you're going to jam these in your deck to stop Thassa's Oracle. You jam them in your deck to, like, stifle your own Lotus Field. That's sweet. Stifling your own, like, Crocs to trigger or something. I think there's fun things to do with it. And it's just a hilarious gotcha card. Like, can you imagine in a format with no fetch lands, if you can get someone's, like, Fabled Passage, it is going to be brutal because no one is going to expect it. So I'm glad Stifle's here, but the idea that it's going to be the answer to, to the pack combo with Thassa's Oracle... That is a that is a silly idea that I, I don't think will actually happen. Long nap in Silver Fox and Elf. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here for you. We need the we need the the knot. We're missing the Frexian Dreadnought. If we got oh man, that would be a sweet deck in historic. And also worth mentioning. Volscourge and Coromunculus, they don't look like much, but those are really good cards for Tempered Steel. I feel like Wizards wants Tempered Steel to be an actual deck. Like, those additions are so geared towards Tempered Steel. Whether or not it's enough, we'll have to see. And the biggest news at the very bottom, Secret Lair Phyrexian Praetors. I don't know if you've ever seen the Elish Norn. The Elish Norn. Oh, my goodness. The Elish... Goodness. The, the Phyrexian Judge Promo Elish. Norn, that card's $500. It is so iconic. It is so sweet. Super Farts, the Drive Down Shade. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. And it's getting essentially a reprint. Like, it's getting the Secret Layer reprint. I guess the border's a little bit different now because of the update to the Legendary Frame or whatever. But still, that's a really sweet card. And the rest of them are coming as well. Oh, it's so, it's so exciting. I will say judges freaked out a little bit because their judge promo is kind of getting reprinted, which is a little bit weird. I wouldn't expect expected that, but oh man. The question is, how much do, <clears throat> how much do you think they sell them for? They haven't announced how they're going to sell them. We do know they're going to be card styles on Arena 2. We don't know. Maybe it's like Vorinclex Lair Drop with a couple of other cards. Jin Lair Drop with a couple of other cards. I would think if they put them all together, it's going to be expensive. It's going to be more expensive if people think like Vorinclex is a $50 card. Elish Norn is like a $40 card. Jin is like a $30 or $40 card. Shielder is like $25 card. Uh, Urbrask is like a $10, $15 card. Those are some high value cards. Better be all together. Oh, what price would you pay? What price would you pay if they put them all together? Let's say the layer drop is all five Phyrexia Praetors. Jam them all together. How much money uh, How much money would you pay? I would expect it's going to be at least 100 bucks. If that was the drop, I think it's got to be... I think it's got to be 100 plus based on the price of the cards. But, oh, like, who wouldn't want these for their commander deck? Who would not want these printings? I... I did, uh, I did, Elf. I did. I, I made it to the P.O. Box. Thank you so much. I don't actually have, I don't actually have the card here to show off. Re I will have it for tomorrow's stream. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I definitely, seriously, really appreciate it. But, yeah, thank you again. So, uh, so that is, so that is the news, but we got magic to play. We got magic to play. So let's do, uh, let's do reminders. $50, $100. I mean... I think $100 is fair. I know cheaper is better, but I think if Wizards asked $100 based on the current prices of the cards, I don't know if people would freak out about that. I feel like the cards are valuable enough and unique enough that uh, that people would probably pay $100 for that layer drop. Hey, what's up, Lucid? Good to see ya. So replay YouTube. That's where you can find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube, Budget Magic coming out a little bit later today, playing some modern. We have podcasts going up later. We had a video about banning Thassa's Oracle, a short. What do you think about that, chat? Uh, do you think that it's time to ban Thassa's Oracle or Tainted Pack in Historic? Have we reached the point where where they need to be where they need to be uh, where they need to be banned? I kind of think the answer is yes. I'm leaning towards yes. Uh, here, I feel like in Historic. Here is my my take on Historic. I think the Historic. What makes Historic fun? is it's a format where anything can happen. All the bets are off. Like, things change really quickly. Stuff gets banned and unbanned and suspended and added to the format. That's what makes Historic interesting. It's the format that's always changing, always changing. So I kind of feel like if... 
if something's on the fence, if it's close, if Wizards considering if it should be banned or not, I would say just ban it because you can always un- or suspend it because you can always unsuspend it later. In historic, in specific, where there's no paper prices to worry about, just go crazy. Like constantly be changing the format, adding new cards. I think that's part of the the appeal of the format. So also, oh my goodness, chat. I don't know. I gotta bring this up. I gotta bring this up. Uh, I gotta, I gotta see your thoughts on this because this actually kind of made me mad. I don't know. Did any of you play? Did any of you play Hearthstone? Because I, I need your help in evaluating this. And I promise we're really gonna play. We're gonna play Magic here in a minute. But there might be another little arena rat. Do any of you actually play, uh, play Hearthstone? Because Hearthstone announced, and this makes me so incredibly jealous. So, so jealous. Look at this announcement. Hearthstone announced that they are selling battle-ready meta decks, fully viable meta decks, for twenty dollars. You don't have to. You don't have to buy packs. You don't gotta dust. You don't gotta do anything like that. Twenty bucks. You pay twenty bucks and get a <laughs> full viable meta deck. Is how how realistic are these decks? Like, I don't know the Hearthstone constructed meta. Like. My guess is this compares to like challenger decks in in paper magic. Like they're probably legitimate legitimate constructed decks, but maybe you get one ember cleave instead of four or whatever. But doesn't this seem insane? Like isn't that what we want arena to do? Could you imagine? Could you even if challenger decks came to arena for $20, could you imagine if you could go onto arena? Imagine you go out to arena and you'd be like, "Hi, huh, I want to play mono red aggro." But oh my goodness, 10 mythics, 24 rares. However, will I do this? And you could just give them $20 and have mono red aggro or something close to mono red aggro. Oh my goodness, that would be so amazing. So it makes me so jealous because the arena economy is just so so clunky with stuff like this. And Hearthstone's just like, hey, 20 bucks will give you a meta deck, which seems absurd. Yeah, they really they really need to do more uh, with that stuff. Choo choo, uh, choo 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 choo. But anyway, those are those are my ramblings. A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. They look pretty solid. All right, so they're they're legitimate enough. If you need some magic cards, you can get them over at CardKingdom.com. Even get a free Scoop Soldier sticker. Let them know you want one in your order notes. They'll hook you up. JB the Pirate, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big Scoop for you. We've talked about this before. Merch page, tokens, t-shirts, playmats, good way to support the stream and the channel. This site donations always appreciated never required two dollars or more get your message right on screen uh so we got to talk about our deck and start playing it we'll talk about this as we go along the idea of paying for wild cards is really interesting to me it is very interesting the question is how much would you pay how much would you be willing to pay? That's always the question. But let's talk about Yagma's Hospital. Start playing some magic, and we talk about it as we go along. Because I actually really want your your opinions on that. Because that seems like such an easy solution. But it's one of those things where I worry what wizards would sell a wild card for and what we would want to pay for a wild card. There might be a very big gap between those two numbers. But uh, anyway, all right. Deck number one today, Yagma's Hospital. What is the idea of this deck? This is a Modern Horizons deck. We are winning with Yagmoth Thran Physician, such a sweet card. So Yagmoth allows you to pay a life, sack a creature, to put a negative one, negative one counter on another creature. Also has protection from humans, discard a card, proliferate, blah, 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 blah. That ability is a big one, though. Sack a creature, put a counter on a creature, uh, put a counter on a creature, so and draw a card. So how does this actually support our combo? Well, the easiest combo is Dralf's Messenger. Dralf's Messenger, and also also Strangle Root Geist are two undying creatures, and Young Wolf are three undying creatures. These are the main combo pieces for our Yagma's Hospital deck. So undying is a weird mechanic. When the creature dies, it comes back into play with a plus one, plus one counter. The way that negative one, negative one counters and plus one, plus one counters work in Magic is if you have a plus one, plus one counter and a negative one, negative one counter, they just cancel each other out. You don't have one of each. So the idea of this deck is we can say, let's say we have two Giralf's Messengers. What we can do is sack one to Ariagmoth, draw a card, it comes back into play with a plus one, plus one counter, drains our opponent for two. 
then we can sack the other one to Yagmoth, and that will put a negative one, negative one counter on the undead one, the one that has a plus one, plus one counter. So we just have a normal drops messenger again. Essentially, we can do that infinite number of times and drain our opponent out of the game. We can also do it with Strangle Roost Geist, Richard's favorite creature. This is actually the Geist tag for Modern. Or Young Wolf, another undying creature. If we have those, though, we need an extra piece because they don't win by themselves. They just keep coming into play a million times. But if we have Zulaport Cutthroat, we drain our opponent out of the game. If we have Hypatra, we can make infinite number of snake creature tokens with Death Touch. We also have Court of Calling, Eldritch Evolution to hold it all together. Essence Warren can gain infinite life with the loop we were talking about. Birds of Paradise, Gilded Goose, speed things up. And that's the deck. It's all about the Ogmoth, all about the Saki of Odai creatures. The deck is so sweet. It's just like such a unique idea. Uh, Wall of Roots does two things. It ramps us. It's also kind of a combo with Court of Calling. Because we can remove a counter and tap it, it essentially adds two mana with, uh, as far as Court of Calling in specific. So it helps us ramp into our Yagmoth uh, with Court of Calling a bit quicker. So that's the idea of the deck. It's like combo Yagmoth undying aristocrats. Otherwise, mana base, pretty typical mana fixing type stuff. Sideboard, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Removal, life gain, counter hate, some some hate for uh, for mill. We got a Kozilek that we can use for mill. Protection, Thoughtseize, Blight Beetle, Plague Engine. Engineer, a ton of one-ups because we can tutor them up with our creature tutor targets. Ranger Man, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. So let's uh let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Yagma's Hospital in Modern. And as I said, tomorrow, 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 if you want to do viewer battles against me in standard or historic, send me an email, mention in the email that uh it's about viewer battles. Give me your uh, arena name and number and also what format you want to play and I will get you on the list for tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's viewer battle stream which is going to be fun could you play collective company in this deck that's a tough one so technically yes the problem is we're kind of on the fence as far as uh, the right number of creatures when you consider that uh, Yagmoth and Rankle are hits we have 26 hittable creatures <sighs> the other thing is it doesn't hit Yagmoth and almost all of our tutors are in the deck to find Yagmoth because we have redundancy with undying creatures we have 12 undying creatures uh, what we don't have a lot of is Yagmoth so the fact that Coco can't hit Yagmoth is probably just a deal breaker for playing it in this deck if it could hit it uh, it would be sweet will tomorrow be best of one or best of three Ooh, that is a that is a good question um probably <sighs> hmm I guess it depends on what do you what do you want to play I think it go either way like mostly the idea of tomorrow's stream is two things like one is it gives us a chance to play, because I think we should do viewer battle streams a little more often. We just don't do them often enough. Uh, and I know a lot of people want to play and show off their cool deck. So that's kind of the big the big idea, is it gives everyone a chance to play and show off their deck. Secondly, uh, hopefully we have a, a more interesting meta. So probably best of one, I guess. Best of one will let us get through more matches. And if, uh, if I play someone and... The match is just a disaster and nothing happens. We always do another one because they go by quicker. So I would assume best of one. Let's go best of one for tomorrow. The only thing I would ask is, and I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I would prefer if we played kind of like fun-ish decks instead of, like if everyone brings rogues in standard, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> I won't be mad or anything, but I will be sad because I'm hoping that we get to do spicy, fun things to some extent. But if all you got is like rogues or something, you can you can definitely still do it. Ooh, this hand. This hand is interesting. This hand is so close to the to the nut draw. We only have one land. Which is a risky part. However, Undying, so to combo off, we need two Undying Creatures, essentially. And we have two Undying Creatures. We got a bit of ramp. We got Essence Warden is the payoff for Undying stuff. We got the Yagmoth. I think we keep it. I, I think it's good enough. Uh, uh, the record counter is not, oh, Elves? This is going to be very interesting. Hmm. Are we, so they shouldn't have much removal. The question is, are we fast enough? And the answer is, we got to draw lands. Birds of Paradise, go. Well, all right. Not too, not too aggressive, elves. Please, <laughs> no arch druid, please. Duenian's elite. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, record is not up to date. That's a carryover from last time. I'll fix it. Hopefully, we will be four zero shortly. 
opponent gets and hits us. Sure. Land. Ooh, that is a land. Okay. So can, how can we win now? Now we're to the how can we win part of the game already. Uh, so the email is saffronoliveemptygoldfish.com. To sign up for tomorrow's Fear Battle stream, just send me an email, saffronoliveemptygoldfish.com or sethemptygoldfish.com. goes to the same place. Uh, arena name, the number that goes along with it, and if you're playing standard or historic. And I will add you to the list. Uh, so, so as simple as that. And if you don't get it into the email and we have extra time, I'll just play people from chat too. But emailing will increase your odds, I would say, of of uh, getting to do it because i'm going to take the people who email first and then uh if there's leftover time we'll uh, we'll get through other people hmm how late is the stream going uh it'll probably like more or less be like a normal stream so starting around two going till around five might go a little bit longer depending on what's going on but roughly roughly two to five ish eastern with the possibility of going a little longer uh all right play twilight mire so if we play Young Wolf Essence Warden, we can't win next turn no matter what. Essence Warden's life gain is kind of relevant. We can also just, yeah, I guess we Jeralf's Messenger. I think after sideboarding, Plague Engineer is going to be the, that's going to be the big one. Oh, play the Messenger, drain you. Next turn, we can Essence Warden Young Wolf. And then if we draw land for Yagmoth, we win. Kieran X, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. Actually, if we... I think if we hit a land, we win, right? If we hit a land, we get to Young Wolf. And sack this to get... Okay, this should be... I think this is game. This should be game, right? Am I am I missing it? This should be game. Uh. Yeah, I think this... I think that does it. Exelis and Cornerex, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we get to play Young Wolf. We get to make green mana, Eldritch Evolution, Duralf's Messenger. Oh, all right. No Ammies. No Ammies. Coco. What can elves have that's going to ruin us? About it. Sure. That's fine. All right. Here comes the combo. Dross Messenger returns. Eldritch Evolution is going to find a Yagmothran physician. And now the party begins. So we put a counter on Dross Messenger. We sack Young Wolf. An opponent knows that they are dead and scoops it up, and that does it. You don't need the warrant. So the deck has two plans for, for winning. One is if we have Jeralf's Messenger and another Undying Creature, that just does it. Because Messenger drains when it comes into play. If we if we have two Undying Creatures that are not Jeralf's Messenger, then we need the Essence Warden or something. But, well, that was, uh, that was not bad. <laughs> my girlfriend and I decided that we want a baby. We're still brainstorming uh, baby names. We wanted something Nordic sounding. Do you have any suggestions? Uh, Seth? Seth is, a, I think, a good name. Saffron? <laughs> I don't know if that's Nordic sounding. What? Give me an example of a Nordic sounding name. Like, what is, what is Nordic sounding? Ragnar? Oh, like Viking? Like Viking names? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ralph? <laughs> Magnus. Magnus of what, though? <laughs> uh, Alright, what are we, what are we bringing in? Pona's playing elves. Uh, I would say, Plague Engineer... Seems like a good card against elves. I would say Blight Beetle might be... Well, I don't know if that matters. I don't know if blocking is the, the issue. Maybe Abrupt Decay? Maybe it's just Abrupt Decay Plague Engineer. I mean, if what we all we want to do is... <laughs> is Eldritch Evolution a one-drop into Plague Engineer? Like, that seems... That seems like the easiest way to win in this matchup. Uh, we're gonna want Wall of Roots. Let's try it like. Actually, let's go down the 
Gilded Goose? Why are we playing one Noble Hierarch and one Gilded Goose? Interesting. Not running like that. Kringlemeister. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, ooh, wow, we have Plague Engineer in hand. This is so strange, but I almost feel like we're supposed to mulligan this. <laughs> like, by the time Plague Engineer comes down, we're probably just going to be dead. Is it actually fast enough being on the on the draw? I miss your subscription. Oh, my apologies. Spice Lord <laughs> for the fourth month. Hashtag Battle of Wits Standard 2021. Ooh, I would love to see Battle of Wits be reprinted. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm actually, I'm going to keep it because, oh, all right, just kidding. <laughs> Layla had a fight. This is a card people play? Wow, Elves players are desperate to beat Plague Engineer, aren't they? Oh, our hand's horrible now. Huh. Well, <laughs> good good tech. I have <laughs> I have never seen a Leyland of Vitality on the battlefield. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so brutal. Yeah? Huh. Sure. Well, now I guess we got a combo. Our hand is not good at comboing. Uh, hey, Seth, what's up with your 10 Modern Horizons deck video talking about different decks than the linked article? Uh, Playland, pass the turn. Well, the article didn't cover every single... So, so initially, the idea with that was... Oh, boy. Well, here they go. Pwn's got the Heritage Druid. That is a that is their scariest card. Leyline of Vitality. Yeah, so initially, so the idea was I was writing an article, and at first I didn't think I was gonna do a video. Uh, and then I realized I could do a top ten deck video. So they weren't supposed to the video was not supposed to be just a reproduction of the article. It was supposed to be kind of like a companion piece to the article. So that was that was the main idea. Ugh. Opponent is probably going to make opponent's got one land too. Hmm. Well, Twilight. So let's let's think about this. If we play assuming we live, we play this, we play Yagmoth. Maybe we just got a Plague Engineer anyway, just to make their stuff smaller? Is that an actual card people play in Elves? That is actually really good tech. We could just play Yogmoth. Yeah, we don't have a way to kill this either. Hmm. Yeah, alright. Ooh. Well, name Elf. Pass the turn. Shrink the dorks. But our opponent's got... They got infinite mana. Opponent's gonna go off. Uh, there is only a single Plague Engineer in the sideboard. Yagmoth is a doctor. And uh, he fixes the undead creatures by removing the counters from them. That is, that's where the name comes from. Yeah, yeah. Elvish Visionary. Yeah, it actually makes a lot of sense. Plague Engineer is normally just game over against elves, or very close to it, so that is a good way to get around it. Yeah, there's only there's only one Engineer in the deck, so... A second one would be very good, but it does not exist. How was, how was everyone's weekend? About it. Ooh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Opponent. Just going off. Another ley line. Wow, they're playing a bunch of those. Okay, so. We gotta draw Young Wolf. That is, I think that's it. If we draw Young Wolf, we can still. Oh no. 
Yeah, if we draw Young Wolf, we still got a shot. Actually, no, we're probably going to die to Yagmoth. Oh, we're just... Oh, <laughs> opponent Wade! Oh, come on, opponent. Come on, opponent. Come on! And your last card is Revoker? Oh, that was... Did you see how many cards our opponent played? Managed to get a 12k raise. Congratulations, Jimmy. That's awesome. Oh, opponent is prepared. The most prepared I have ever seen. Well, I guess we're bringing Rex Sage. Oh, that's so awkward. Oh, this is going to be hard. This is going to be very difficult now. Opponent's got just a million answers. Who who has built a sideboard to beat <laughs> to beat Yagmoth's hospital? <laughs> Apparently our opponent. Huh. Two lands, no mana dork. We do have an abrupt decay. One of these lands is the always disappointing Dryad Arbor. I don't think that hand does it. We're going to mulligan. Well, at least we get to put the Dryad Arbor to the bottom. I mean, this hand could work if we live long enough. Maybe? Ooh, we're in Catacombs Go. Yeah, opponents, our opponent's prepared. They're ready for us. Uh, do we need two Undying Creatures to combo off or just one? Two Undying Creatures to go infinite. Because you need to be able to sack one to remove the counter from the other and back in. <sighs> Dryad Arbor. Why? We put it to the bottom, cracked a fetch, and shuffled it to the top, apparently. <laughs> we just we just can't get away from it. We can't get away from it. <laughs> it will always be here to cause problems. Oh, no. Yeah, Patrick could fill in. Bone it. What? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> wow oh wow it's like our opponent built their entire sideboard just to not lose our deck <laughs> yeah that's that is something i have never experienced before well um so if there's good news is that we can use this zombie to Court of Calling for Plague Engineer. And they don't have their silly... They don't have their silly ley line, so maybe. <laughs> uh, it's not even like the Yagmoth deck is a super popular deck. It's like... It's like a real deck, but it's like tier three or something. It's not like one of the best decks in the in the format. <laughs> Maybe it picks up on a lot of hate. All right, opponent gets rid of our Yagmas. Well, one, one, two, one, two, three. F oh, we can't. Hmm. We can't even do it this turn, can we? We're one mana short. And then they can play a lord and get us. One, two, three, four. Well, play Noble Hierarch. Play Sad Riot Arbor. Go to combat, hit ya. Ooh. Go attacking. Yeah, that's an interesting elf sideboard, that's for sure. So, so are you going to... How many secret layers do you get? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, this is what we're going to talk about. How much would you pay for a wild card on Arena? Let's say a mythic wild card. How much, how much money would you pay for a single mythic wild card? I still think they should just sell challenger decks at a cheap price, but...
selling wild cards would also be sweet a dollar seven dollars 20 20 cents 20 cents that would uh that would make arena very player friendly <laughs> 20 cents is so is so cheap i mean that would be sweet if they did come on no lords no lords war master all right mystic if this is thought sees oh, opponent passes okay so let's think about this one two play wall of fruits one two three four five six Hmm. Well, play Wall of Roots. Step one. Overgrown Tomb. Step two. Cord. One, two, three, one, two, three. A little bit scared of this black mana, but Court of Calling X3. Get a Plague Engineer on Elf. Kill him. Attack you. Oh. Down to 11. Are we going to win with our opponent having the hate? Opponent. Oh, I thought there was going to be a fatal push, but there's not. Same minus mouth share. Uh, it is a good shaman of the pack. Not too scary. It is a good one. Opponent makes a dark. Sure, Peatland passes when we draw land. Go to combat. Attack! 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 Uh, when's the new Modest Mouse album coming out? I didn't realize they actually had a new one coming out. Someone was on the math on Twitter to see how much a wild card actually costs you. Uh, it's a, it's quite a bit. It depends on like the numbers you you've seen, uh, you use and how exactly you calculate it. But the numbers I've seen have been conservatively like six ish dollars for a rare and like twelve for a mythic, and I think that's actually actually like pretty optimized i think you probably pay more than that in general yeah dryad beats might actually be able to get there opponents down to eight attack attack opponent blocks drops to seven past the turn about it no lords no lords another ooh, opponents in all the redraw lands cracks a beat lad how much does a pack cost a pack costs a dollar opponent very good at drawing shaman of the packs passes ooh cord huh Hmm. What do we cord for? We cord for something. I mean, so you get a rare every pack, but to get the specific rare that you want, we sideboard out Rankle. I might as well play this. Make a make a token. One, two, three. One, two. You know, we're going to go X3 just to make sure. I think we're getting a two drop, but but I'm not 100% sure. Could get Messenger. So, Cord X3. Oh, actually, hmm. Hapatra. Whenever it deals damage, put a counter on something. Whenever one or more counters are put on something, make a snake. 
Rex Age doesn't do anything. Zillapore Cutthroat's kind of interesting. That makes it hard for our opponent to block. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Tequila Worm? How are you? Could just get Messenger. Strangle Root attacks. I guess that's probably Strangle Root. Not exciting, but... Yeah, all right. Strangle Root. What, what would Richard do? That's the question. What would Richard do? And the answer is, almost assuredly, get a Strangle Root. <laughs> attack, attack, attack. Opponent. Wow. We might be winning through the hate. Uh, our opponent uh, managed to necromancy our Yagmas, unfortunately. We're trying to piece it together on hard mode at the moment. <laughs> hey, what's up, Tequila Worm? How are you doing today? Good to see you. Good to see you. Opponent goes to one point of life. Untaps. Dies? Through the hate? Through the necromancy to stop our combo? Maybe. Uh, why not allow you to get wild cards in the pack slot if you... F Wait. Why not allow you to get wild cards in the pack slot if you finish the type of card? Ooh. I mean, that would... That would be generous. Like, if after you completed all the rares, you just got a rare wild card, I... That would work very well for someone like me who spends a ton of money. I don't know if it's as good for people who's... Really? They peel the Lord... Llanowar Elves. One, two. Wow, we're going to lose. We're going to lose. We're going to lose now. Oh, uh, that's not good. Oh, that's insane. Well, I don't know if Zulaport was better. Our, if our we got a Zulaport, our opponent would be at a much higher life total. You got to make sure to keep that in mind. Our opponent top decking Elvish Archdruid is obviously... Obviously super brutal. Like, that is... That is the best thing our opponent could draw. That is 20 out of 20. Well, I'm going to go attacking. The problem is they're going to get this Ormondal. Like, there's a pretty realistic shot that they're going to be able to Ormondal, and then we literally do just lose. Yeah, we we need him not top deck that Archdruid for one more turn. I don't know about the... I don't know about the Cutthroat idea. Our opponent would still be at, what, seven? So we wouldn't be particularly close. And it only triggers on our creatures. It's not a blood artist. Opponent continues to top deck reasonably effectively. Goes to combat. Passes. Yeah, that, uh, that does it. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Yeah, that, that's just game. Like, we're just, we're literally dead on board. Yeah? Well? <laughs> bad time? Oh, we almost beat the infinite hate. That was a really, really bad time to draw many lands in a row. Wow. I'm, like, shocked. I feel like the odds of this playing out the way it did are like one in a million, but yeah. Feel like they earned it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know about how top decking their lord the turn before they were gonna die is earning it, but Wiz was here! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, cannot cast a thing with this hand, so we will mulligan. Ah. Uh. I don't know if Dryad Arbor is worth playing in any deck. Like, Dryad Arbor, it always finds its way to your hand. Every Somehow it always manages to do that. It is very, very good at it. 
Jeff Boyer D. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, they did have a lot of sideboard cards. That is true. Well, we will get rid of the Dryad Arbor. And see what happens. <laughs> rat deck wins? What is what is rat deck wins, Jolly? <laughs> oh. What a what a brutal loss. At a minimum, there should be a number that you can trade up. Ten common wild cards for an uncommon. Yeah, definitely any any way to have more control over your collection, I think, would be a, a good thing. Right now there's like zero. Ooh. <laughs> Pack rat rat holiday. I think we played something like that for Meme or Dream. A Lucindrago. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, well, we will play a Young Wolf. We will play a Young Wolf. Vern Catacombs. Cragford and Catacombs. Overgrown tomb untapped and birds of paradise. Well, <laughs> well, we played a bunch of one drops. <laughs> there are many, many one drops on the battlefield. Worst pronunciation ever. I will. I'll take it. <laughs> About it, please, a lad. Crazy idea, what about a pseudo-economy where you could trade your digital cards with other... Oh, that is probably our best draw. I mean, it might get countered, but otherwise, we'll see. Uh, so, Colony Garden. Make a plant. Yagmoth. Resolves, okay. Well, worst case, we can draw a bunch of cards now, which is pretty big. Attack you, attack you. We have infinite ETBs, but we don't have a way to we don't have a way to win with them yet. About it. Down to eighteen. Cracks. All right, the hospital is here. Sacred Foundry tap. Cracks. Yeah, trading would definitely be interesting. I would, I would be done with trading. I would let. I'm also just always been surprised that they. Wow, Pwn just scoops it up. I'm also surprised that there's not at least dusting. That's the maybe the. Wow, I don't even know what our opponent's doing. That's a maybe the most surprising part. I remember when Arena was coming out, no one even considered the possibility that you would not have any way of doing anything with your cards. That's That wasn't even, like, a thought that entered people's minds. Because everyone just assumed that there would be some sort of way to, to manage your collection. But, uh, but it ended up that there wasn't. So, so yeah, that was, that was, like, pretty shocking, I think. Uh, we'll just go down Gilded Goose, bring in the Thought Seas, see what our opponent's doing. Uh, what do you think of trading your Mythics and Rares on Arena for Cheese? I mean, I do like Cheese. <laughs> what do you guys think the OG Border Specialists are going to cost? The OG Border Foils, they are going to be expensive. So, we don't have a super duper great comparison uh, for what they will cost that I can think of. One one way to look at them would be similar to to the old border cards from Time Spire Remastered. I would expect the normal old borders to be maybe double the regular price. I'm doing well, Omnicron. How are you? So I'd expect normal old borders to be maybe double. So let's say a normal fetch land's fifty dollars. Oh, they're just burn. Uh, normal fetch land's fifty dollars. Then a old border version might be a hundred dollars the foils it's really going to depend on really going to depend on how they're distributed which we just don't know but i think it's very possible they're like 500 plus 
I can see expensive ones being close to a thousand even. Like, I think they're going to be incredibly pricey for old border foils. I think they're going to be some of the most expensive... Most expensive cards that we have seen printed in a very long time. Well, one, two... Wall of Roots. They're just burn. They're just straight up burn. Well, we are going to do our opponent's job for them. Kill ourselves a smidge. Pass the turn. Down to 11. Inspiring Vantage. Uh, old Border Fetchland Foils. Opponent has a path for the strangle route. Okay. I don't know what our opponent's deck's doing. Huh. Goes to combat. Attacks. We block. Down to nine. Suspends a riff ball. Suspends another Rift Bolt. Well, play a land. Yagmoth. Hit you for one. Ooh, two Rift Bolts, though. It was burned the whole time. Yeah, I mean the old border time star remastered cards are super are super expensive. Thoughts on MPL being disbanded. <sighs> so we talked about it a little bit last stream. On one hand, the MPL, I think even from what I've seen from most MPL players, pretty much everyone agrees MPL was was a was a disaster. So like the MPL itself it needed to go. I think, like I said, I've even seen people in the MPL who have been saying the same thing. So I think everyone is everyone is in agreement that the MPL wasn't working. And it wasn't working, I think, because of Wizards. It's not on the players. It's on, it's on Wizards. But I think everyone agrees that the MPL, disastrous. On the other hand, what makes me nervous is Wizards didn't really announce... All right, yeah, yeah. So well, they're playing burn. Well, now we know what they're doing. Wizards did not announce a replacement. Wizards didn't announce anything, anything to replace the MPL, and that to me is a that is a big concern. Like that is what I'm worried about. Is who knows what'll happen? Uh, we we lost to elves. Opponent. Opponent uh, had a lot of sideboard cards and drew their lord at the absolute perfect time. Um, do you think they will bring back gold and platinum pros? So I, this is this is one of the things that bothers me with the whole situation is the information that Wizards gave us publicly seems to be very different than what they told the MPL members privately. So if you just read the article that Wizards posted, my first reading of that was, oh, it sounds like maybe they're going to go back to the old system. They're like, oh, we're going to have GPs and Pro Tours and uh, PTQs. So when I read that, I was like, oh, that's exciting. That's what everyone wants. Everyone wants to go back to something like the old system that made sense and uh, everyone could qualify for it. But uh, Wizards, Wizards told the pros directly they're not doing that. They're not going back to the old system. There's not going to be gold, silver, platinum. That's not going to exist. They are not supporting pro players in that way. So, so I don't think that's I don't think that's going to happen because apparently that is from multiple MPL members. Like that is what they told. That is what they told MPL players directly. Like it's just not going to happen. So that's kind of I would say disappointing. Because that was my first, that was my first take too. I was like, "Wow, that sounds sweet. We're gonna go back to the old system. It's gonna be awesome. Everyone's gonna love it." But, uh, but actually, <laughs> actually, new. No. Eh, let's try. Is Hapatra even worth it? Hapatra is just gonna die. Hapatra does not seem worth it. Let's uh, let's try it like that. 
So I'm hopeful that uh, that maybe, maybe the end result will be a better system. I'm holding out hope that that's what happens. Whether or not that actually does happen, we'll see. I'm just nervous because Wizards has a history of like saying, hey, we're going to do this really cool thing. We're going to announce it in the future. And then we never hear anything about it again, which ugh, I don't know. So that's my fear. Is, uh, is we just never hear announcement. Today's podcast, we talk about... Um, we talk about the organized play thing. We talk about the, the 10% thing. I don't know if you saw that with Mark Rosewater saying only 10% of Magic players had ever played in a tournament, a sanctioned tournament, which... It makes sense, but that's uh, that's a crazy number. It shows how small our little bubble is. I think that's the thing that that we often miss is if you're watching the stream or talking about magic on like Twitter or Reddit or whatever, you are, you are in the top 1% or something of magic players, as far as how dedicated you are to, to the game, because most magic players don't do magic players, depending on how you define it, don't do any of those things. So yeah, uh, so we talk about the OP thing. We talk about the the casual verse in franchise conversation. Talk about historic anthologies. We talk about the arena tournaments. Did any of you get hit by the arena tournament over the weekend? Wizards, wizards. <laughs> that one actually, that one actually made me laugh. Like that, that one kind of just cracked me up. All right, opponent has a searing blaze. Yeah, the tournament thing this weekend cracked me up that I don't even know how they managed to mess it up in the way that they messed it up, but but somehow they did. Well, here comes the Undying Dorks. If our opponent taps out, I think we just have, we have the combo next turn. We have a new donation from Emmett. Uh, $3 do Emmet, uh, $3 donation. Hey, Seth, you did not reply to my email about the tournament player's tweet from Mark Rosewater. Of course, it was a bit silly. Anyway, how do you feel if you turn Commander into a real tournament format? Hmm. I don't even remember your, uh, the tournament player tweet. Oh, oh, it was a tweet? Oh, yeah. Uh, on Twitter, if you ever really need to get me a message, emailing is usually the safest way. On Twitter, there's so many notifications that... Uh, I'm sure I missed tons of things on Twitter, in all honesty. Uh, thank you for the donation. How would you feel if Commander was turned into a real tournament format? I think that Commander being a real tournament format would be horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. I think that, uh, I think that what makes Commander good is that it's a Commander, uh, that it's a casual format. I think that that's what Commander is. Like, ah. I don't think that Commander even can really truly be a tournament format because Commander is a casual format. That is, in my opinion, like the definition of oh, the definition of Commander. Huh. Is it worth shocking ourselves to play the spell sky? Oh, go to combat. Attack you. See what our opponent does. Swing swing. opponent drops to seven well play spell sky opponent we might be we might be doing this the the old-fashioned way just the beating down with the with the strangle root guys, Richard style. Will this deck be at YouTube with a brief explanation of the combo and the game plan of the deck? I've been out of the game for a while and the deck looks fairly interesting. Uh, I will, after we finish this game and we can see the whole deck, I will give you a, a brief explanation for people coming in later. Although, uh, it will be in the YouTube video because we talked about it at the beginning of the video. Wow, opponent just goes bolt to face. Okay. Well, play the tap land. Next turn should be the combo turn. Opponent. Pass spell sky. Alright. Well, he shouldn't be able to 14 us here. Oh, there's a rift bolt. Wait, maybe they can. Wow, if we die from 17. Opponent. 
down to 11. They need four bolts in hand. They can't. They need a land, too. Okay, there's a land. Three cards in hand. Lava spike to eight. Lava spike to five. Go to combat. Attack, attack. Opponent takes it. Ooh, Zulfor Cutthroat. We can't play Yagmoth or we're going to die. Boros, Boros Charm is their last card, I think. So I think we just play Zulaport Cutthroat. And uh, Sack Messenger. And ping ping and play around the Boros charm. Oh, there's the combo. Well, not the combo, but there's a win. We could have comboed if it wasn't if it wasn't for a uh, for our opponent's burn spells. Oh, that was good. Big Week Bunny Soldier, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big Chip here. thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so quick review of the deck for people coming in later. The idea of the deck, Yagmoth, that is the main card, the card that makes it happen. It lets us pay a life to sack a creature to put a negative one, negative one counter on another creature and draw a card. So this means if we can get two undying creatures, which when they die, they come into play with a plus one, plus one counter, we can go infinite. We sack one to put the negative one negative one counter on the other one which gets rid of the plus one plus one counter they get from undying so basically you just sack back and forth if we have a giraffe's messenger we just win by draining our opponent two life at a time if we don't have giraffe's messenger we have like young wolves and strangaroo guys we can win with zulu port cutthroat uh draining our opponent with the death triggers we can gain infinite life with essence warden we can make a ton of snakes with hapatra so that's the plan of the deck basically yagmoth infinite sacrifice shenanigans so um only good tournament for edh i've done is with friends to decide who plays for the meal the next time we meet up tournaments at lgs for edh haven't been a great experience that's kind of the problem i think is it's a problem of incentives with uh with commander tournaments so tournaments have prizes tournaments yeah i updated the record so tournaments have prizes in general and prizes incentivize you to win the tournament. The problem is, I don't think that's what Commander should incentivize. My experience with Commander is that Commander is the most fun when your goal isn't so much to... Well, this kind of seems fine. When your goal isn't so much to win, but it's to, like, have a good time and then maybe win. So the problem with... And, and I think this has played out in practice in commander tournaments in the past is you end up you end up having all these people who are trying to win essentially and that makes it unfun for the people who are trying to have a enjoyable game of commander because you're playing against people who are trying to combo off which is the incentive of of a tournament because if you get prizes for winning magic online has tried to add like points for not winning like you vote for each other and that plays into who uh, who wins so I think that's a, an interesting idea. So maybe there's some workarounds to uh, get around the issue. But but yeah, I think in general, in general, that's a problem with Tournament Commander. There's a reason why GP payouts from the demand EGA teams got changed from having a winner to paying everyone equally because most players split the prize pool. Uh, ooh, hmm, all right. Cat Jesus, eh? Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. That's a bit of a problem. Oh, we were so set up to win, too. Leonard Arbor is actually really good. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Our good friend, Dryad Arbor. Oh... Yeah, Cat Jesus is an issue. Uh, well, play a Verdant Catacombs. Go. Player A attempts to win. Player B has a counter spell, but knows player C also has a win. Do they counter players A win and just allow player C to win? Do they do nothing? Yeah. I don't know what the answer to that is, honestly. 
Has anyone ever played Tournament Commander? Like, I know at GP Vegas last time they did it, they had, they had like tournaments going, but it seemed like the feedback was that it wasn't very enjoyable and that people would rather just kind of play casual or like semi semi competitive games rather than actually trying to to play tournament games with prizes on the line opponent passes well we will pay the cat jesus tax we will crack our fetch we will get an overgrown tomb tapped. Untap. Ooh. Hmm. Oh, Twilight Mire. Yagmoth. Hmm, and now what? We can draw a lot of cards. We can draw many cards. Uh, I got a quick glimpse at Tomer's deck. I didn't really look at it in depth. Was it, was it fun? Well, sack, counter. Opponent does have the path. Well, sack, get it back. Sack Young Wolf. Kill the Arbiter. So we actually get a land. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Take a forest. Get a Young Wolf. I mean, Yagmoth is just very powerful. So our opponent had the ability to disrupt the combo. But that was still a pretty sweet turn. Like... We still killed our thing. We refilled our hand. We have a Cortigalling. We got rid of the Arbiter. Opponent. Silent Clearing. And Stoneforge Mystic. And getting a counter on this helps, too, because it means we can actually kill it with Proliferate eventually if we want to. Wait, you're quitting you're quitting Caffeine Taunos? Oh, dear. I don't know if I could, uh, I don't know if I could quit Caffeine. I need my, I need my coffee. The coffee is essential. Aww. Aww, opponent. Alright. Another Arbiter. Opponent passes. Well, we will play... Wall of Roots. We will play... Messenger. We'll play Colony Garden. Pass the turn. We need enough stuff that we can pay for Arbiter and tutor up Yagmoth. Uh, I'm not. There's a conversation going on right, right now just saying that if I don't have caffeine for a day or two, I don't get the same withdrawal effects as others described. Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess I haven't quit caffeine, so... <laughs> I don't know. Hey, thank you, Tubalupin. I appreciate the, the kind words and the encouragement. I mean, I've quit soda, but I still, I still have my coffee. Gotta, gotta have the coffee. In LGS in my era, I had this mini EDH tournament where all the players would only have three would have three life tokens and when in game you would only steal a token from the other player when you took them out of the game so if you had a win with a card that just uh, so if you 
had a win with a card that just said you win the game, you would not get the other player's tokens, so you wouldn't get ahead. At the end of the day, you got prize based on the number of tokens you amassed. Mm, that's kind of an interesting idea. I've never, I've never actually heard of that before. Opponent passes. So one, two, three, four. Opponent has a field of ruin. So one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. I'll play Hapatra. Play Arbor Elf. Pass the turn. Once our opponent does something, we're gonna go for we're gonna go for we're gonna go for the win. Come on, come on. Tap that mana, put your batter skull into play, and die, please. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think we can do it if our opponent doesn't have interaction. Another path would be obnoxious, but yeah, quitting uh, Zoda is definitely definitely was tough. The fizz, the the fizz is the addictive part. <laughs> wow, did our opponent? They didn't do anything. Interesting. Wow, they didn't put the they didn't put the batter skull into play. Very strange. I went from soda to uh to Gatorade and then Gatorade to water. Is Into the North good for historic? I mean, it'll be interesting. There is not a rampant growth in the format. There uh, and now there is. And arguably, Into the North might be even better than Rampant Growth because you can get the Snow Duels. The question's going to be, now that we have, like, Explores and Grow Spirals, Ramp Spells that also draw you a card? Oh, this is such a weird standoff. Is Are those cards even good? Like, is Rampant Growth even good anymore? I I actually don't know. So I guess we'll find out. Like, I think End of the North is better than Rampant Growth. And Rampant Growth, traditionally a good ramp spell. But we've gotten so many busted, well, not busted, but strong ramp spells that also draw cards. I don't know how good Rampant Growth is anymore. I mean, I guess it's probably decent, I would say. There was no B&R today. Not that I've seen at least. I was hoping they would get rid of something in historic preferably thassa's oracle but also tainted pack is an option all right let's just, let's just pass let's keep doing our weird standoff okay so we're gonna go for this opponent taps we will pay for arbiter court of calling One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Oh, Tanos with the gifts up to Tacos. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Well, we will pay a life. Counter on Young Wolf. Select your Elf's Messenger. Is it game? Opponent gets drained. We draw a card. We make a snake. I think it's over. I think we got him. So we counter on this, sack this. Ho! Oh. All right, there is the combo. If you're wondering about the combo, and we even have Hapatra for a bonus, this is how the combo works. So counter on one, sack the other, back and forth, back and forth, draw a ton of cards, make a ton of snakes. 
uh, some kind of hard news, thank you. And we don't even need an extra support piece, even though we are making infinite tokens, because we have... Because we have Dralf's Messenger going. Counter, sack. Pwner down to 11. Pwner's going to play it out. Pwner's playing the clock game, I guess. Uh, counter, sack. We could also shoot down their board for fun, which... Maybe we should. <laughs> and opponent scoops it up. Oh. Uh, is Apatra win more? No, so Apatra is a one of. The thing that Apatra does is it allows us to combo with one undying creature. It can essentially replace, uh, let's say, the Giraffe's Messenger. Which, so let's say we have this board state. We don't have the Giraffe's Messenger. What we can do is we can uh, sacrifice, like, the plant or whatever uh, to make the first token. And then we can go infinite by sacking the token in the young wolf and get infinite triggers for our Zula Port Cutthroat or whatever. Or gain infinite life with Essence Warden. So I think that it's actually pretty good in the deck for that reason. The infinite token plan is kind of funny, but it's not really necessary. But as a... As a backup undying creature in a weird way, that's where Hippodra actually kind of uh, kind of shines. Also gets around Graveyard Day. Are there any good negative one, negative one counter commanders other than Hippodra? Um, Yeah, I guess Atroxa would proliferate, but I don't think there's... I can't think of another commander that specifically refers to... That specifically refers to negative one, negative one counters. Uh, not in a way this does. There's some that put counters on themselves or whatever, but I think this is the best one. Ooh, Scorpion God. Yeah, Scorpion God is, is a good one. Would you have one the exchange? You were paying two life for every two you drained, uh, and they were doing it first. I didn't look at my life total. Hmm. Were we going to run out of life first? We may have. It is... Yeah, I wasn't looking at the life total. I guess it is possible that we could have ran out of life first. I mean, I guess the other thing is, if life was a concern, we could have just... We could have just killed all of our opponent's stuff and, and won fairly if we needed to. Uh, is Plague Engineer worth it? I feel like it's kind of not. Revoker might be fine. Yeah, it's probably just going to die. Uh, so Kozilek, we're not really planning on on casting. Kozilek is... Is in the deck to beat Mill. It's a, it's essentially just a essentially just a mill hate card. So Kozilek, Amrakul, Ulamog, any of the shuffling things uh, would do it. Time for potatoes. Welcome. I oh, can't keep this. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, I think we keep this. It is speculative. But the Aldrich Evolutions can be pretty good if we draw something to go with them. Maybe we just put Yagmoth on the... Yeah, let's put Yagmoth on the bottom. All right. Go, go, Eldritch Evolution. Yeah, Containment Priest is uh, is pretty good. Ooh. Giver's annoying. If they follow this up with Arbiter, this hand suddenly became very bad. <laughs> very bad. Oh. Okay, not, not Arbiter, at least. Did you realize I was actually doing some research? One of the things I did over the weekend was I made a deck on Arena that had every... Huh. I made a deck on Arena that had every mythic from Throne of Eldraine, and then I made another deck that had every mythic from Strixhaven. And I played against Sparky because I felt like there weren't a lot of animations. Oh dear. I felt like there were not a lot of animations in Strixhaven. There were several cards in Strixhaven that I was like, oh, this card's gonna have an epic animation. And then 
And then when I actually played the card, I was like, wait, there's like no animation at all. So I actually did a test and recorded it just to see the animations and i was actually pretty surprised to find that like throne of eldrain every mythic had a animation and many of them had really sweet animations in i guess this is fine we get to kill the sword and then in strixhaven I think it was less than half that really had animations. And a lot of the animations were doubled. Like the Elder Dragons. I didn't realize this. The Elder Dragons. The big, hyped creator of the colleges of the set. They all have the same animation. There's like a slight color change. But it's all the like shadow of the dragon flying over the battlefield. So they like reused it. Like a, like a, animated, like a animated cartoon. Like anime cartoon where you're like, hey, wait, I think I saw this scene before. And the people in the background are like doing doing the same exact thing because they don't want to animate it again. That's that's basically what they did with. <laughs> that's basically what they did with uh, <laughs> with the Elder Dragons. So I'm wondering, and then you combine that with, you combine that with uh, this weekend. Did any of you play the tournament this weekend? Oh my goodness, that cracked me up so much. Somehow... They're doing this qualifier on Arena, and in between day one and day two, they messed up the format. The format was supposed to be standard. They advertised it as standard, and then all of a sudden, people sign up for day two, and it was historic. And then people were, like, asking them about it, and they were like, if you joined with a standard deck, keep playing. If you joined with a historic deck, please don't play and just await further instructions. So you had some people playing standard, you had some people playing historic, no one knew what to do, and then eventually they decided to restart the, the entire event from the beginning. So, which is probably what they had to do, given the, given the situation. And they did give people a gem refund and also invited them to, I think, the next three qualifiers for free. But it was... <laughs> It was pretty ridiculous. So I'm coming around on the idea that Arena is just horribly under, under-supported, understaffed, lacking in investment. I think that that's what's probably going on. I feel, because uh, some of that stuff is just, it's crazy. Like, n not as many animations as there used to be. Constant issues with tournaments. Like, they gotta, it's gotta be like an intern. They gotta just have like a random intern. They're like, hey, you do all the arena stuff or something. At least, that's probably an exaggeration, but that's some, that's somehow what it feels like a lot of the times. Rushed Rebirth. Should this deck be playing Rushed Rebirth? I'm gonna have to look up Rushed Rebirth. Well, one, two. Wall of Roots. One, two, three. Eldritch Evolution. Get. Mm, what happens if we get Yagmoth and they path it? How bad is that? I guess another Skyclave apparition is the worst. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it is. It is pretty bad. I don't know if we get another option, though. Wrinkle? Mm, yeah, I guess. I mean... It's Yagmoth's hospital. The doctor, the doctor is in. I think we just gotta get Yagmoth. Gotta get Yagmoth. Hope they don't have another answer. Uh, so Rush Rebirth. I think the problem with Rush Rebirth is that it gets a thing uh, that is lesser mana value, and we're mostly trying to ramp into Yagmoth or tutor up Yagmoth. So I don't think tutoring up something of lesser value actually does a whole lot in the deck. So, while I think Rush Rebirth is a sweet card, I don't think it actually supports our combo very well. Do you people know Magic Legends is a thing? Is it? <laughs> is it really? 
<laughs> All right, so opponent does have more answers. So many answers. Opponent goes to combat. Gets in. Hits us. Sure, sure, sure. Down to 12. Re oh, my God. All right, opponent's got all the answers. Hmm. Yikes. Well. Now I don't know if we can get out of this. Dralf's Messenger. Ooh, how do we do this? Orin Aura or on a rampage. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tip here for you. Well, sack the birds. Uh my weekend was it was uh it was good. I went and looked at another house, but oh my god. It was uh it was it was not exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> but the quest to find a house continues. Well, okay. I think we're going to take Hapatra. And then maybe if we draw Yagmoth, we can piece something together that rest in pieces. An issue. Yeah, we're just running out of time is the issue. Because we need to be able to sack a bunch of stuff and pay the life for it. So we're going to have to find Yagmoth pretty quick. Opponent gets in with the Skyclave Apparition. Yagmoth, Yagmoth. Come on. Come on. Give us the Yagmoth. Opponent. Jeez. Every graveyard hate spell. And passes. Pete land. Well. Sack it. Birds of Paradise. Pete land. Go. Well. We'll pass the turd. Ooh. Moving this weekend? Where are you moving to, Sethro? Five years. Good lord. That is a... Oh, wow. That's a, that's a really good last card. Yeah, now, now we actually just can't win. Hmm. I feel like we have run into a surprising amount of hate for our archetype. I wasn't expecting the, the meta to have so many hate cards, but a quick reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magic cards from Strixhaven or otherwise, like a Platinum Angel, you can get them at cardkingdom.com. Uh, all right, so Rex Age definitely coming in. Oh, Plague Engineer, no. Yeah, maybe it's just a Rex Age. We could bring in Force of Vigor. I don't know about the sideboard. The sideboard is very one of heavy. So many one ofs. I've never really liked the all one of. I've never really liked the all one of sideboard plan. Or like, if you're gonna do it, like, I don't know. Like, why are you playing? Uh, like, what's the upside of Force of Vigor in a deck that has eight ways to tutor up creatures? Is it really better to play one Force of Vigor instead of just playing another like Rex Age or something? I don't know. Yucky! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chair for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so hate cards for days. Annoying, annoying, annoying. Well, all right. Let's run it like that. Well, we get to play first. And yeah, we'll keep birds into Geist into Eldritch Evolution, I guess. Assuming we don't get hated out by our opponent. Verdant Catacombs. Crack. Verdant Catacombs. Over in Doom. Untapped. Birds of Paradise. Go. Force of Vigor was a two of in the version I played against. Interesting. All right. So opponent has Graph Digger's Cage. That's bad for us. Uh, we will play a... Actually, let's Twilight Mire. And Graph Digger's Cage is super annoying. Strangle Root Geist. Gilded Goose. 
Craftinger's Cage. We've run into so many random hate cards. <laughs> Hit you for two, pass the turn. What Historic Anthology card are you most excited to build around? Historic Anthology 5 doesn't have that many build-around cards, really. Oh, wow, they kept it just for... They kept it just for the Graft Digger's Cage, and I think it's going to work for him. Attack with the Strangle Root. Wow, okay. Opponent blocks. Colony Garden. We need threats, we need threats, we need threats, threats, threats. Buller Puller, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so. Oh, and they top deck the land. Oh, opponent, oh, opponent. Uh, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. I'm probably most excited to play Dragonstorm, honestly. Well, Peatland. Let's crack the Peatland. See if we can draw some real cards. No. Land number, uh, 79 or 80. I lost track. Uh, pass the turn. What do you think about Praetor Tribal it is, Dorit? Wow! And no! Oh! oh. Alright. Wow, opponent's getting paid off for uh, for keeping that one lander down to 15. Opponent. Sort of fire nice. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, we draw a noble hierarch. <laughs> Play a verdant catacombs. Go to combat. Get in for one. Pass the turn. Opponent down to... I can't believe they drew those lands in a row! Uh, so I think Dragonstorm's gonna be sweet. That's gonna be super fun. Praetor Tribal, I mean, I don't think... I, like, what would Praetor Tribal look like? I guess I would imagine, like, playing all the Praetors and Unburial Rites and trying to reanimate them. Uh, but there's not really any inter-Praetor synergy that I can think of, so... I don't know. I don't know about actually trying to play Praetor Tribal. That kind of seems like a, a bit of a a bit of a stretch. But, I mean, if you want to do it for fun, it, it might be fun. Hey, what's up, Ice Cream? How are you? Good to see ya. Flicker Wisp enters the party. Going to hit our plant token. Well, we will pay for Arbiter. We will crack the Vernon Catacombs. Try to thin the deck. Overgrown Tomb. Can we draw a Yogmoth? Wall of Roots. Well, the answer appears to be no. Play Wall of Roots. Twilight Mire. Oh, no! No, 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 no. Well, past the turn, but this one is slipping away. Slipping away. Oh, uh, put it. I mean, I'm excited for Grizzly Salvage. Grizzly Salvage is a card that I've played in a lot of decks, and it is really sweet in a lot of decks. Yeah. Hmm. Opponent's gonna go attacking. Oh, we got a chump, but we're we're just running out of time. We're running out of time. What a what a disaster. Mega food. Sack of food. Pony passes. We will continue to draw Birds of Paradise. I mean, I guess in some ways this is kind of an issue with the deck that we do have a lot of fluff. Like, the deck is very dependent on Yagmoth. And if you just draw a bunch of lands and a bunch of, uh, of non-Yagmoth stuff... This is the thing that can happen. Like, we... I don't think... Well, we drew one creature that actually had power this entire game. I'll keep blocking. Hey, what's up, Drinket? How are you? Doing well. Good to see ya. Yeah, I mean, we have drawn just mono mana sources, and... Our deck... Jeez. And our opponent ran very, very well. In the sense that they kept a one-lander because they had Graftigger's Cage, and then 
they proceeded to draw all the lands they needed to uh, to play magic. So, I don't know. As someone who has kept my Sherwin Landers, <laughs> I guess props. Strangleroot Geist. Not very helpful. We will... I guess go attacking. I mean, it doesn't even do anything. Well, pass it. Yeah, we're just, we're running out. We're running out of time. Once we run out of ways to stop this Flicker Wisp, we're just, we're done. Like, once they start hitting us with swords, they shoot down our board. And without a board, there's no coming back. Uh, opponent. Ghost quarter. Off. Wow. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So I think our opponent's drawn five out of six lands after keeping the one lander. Uh, well, we'll block with the Gilded Goose. So we have one turn to draw a real magic card. One. And I guess, uh, and they have two of those. You know what, I don't even think we make, yeah, we're not even gonna make a food, all right. Can we draw a real card? We have one turn to find it. <laughs> Opponent. Cast the Batter Skull. Wow. One land Batter Skull. Hmm. Well, we will uh, crack a food. Gain some life. I mean, I think it's literally got to be Yagmoth. Yagmoth or Rex Age, or else, or else it's it. That's it. All right. Well, that was uh, that was disappointing. <laughs> I mean, I guess the good news is all these games have been close. I think that we are. I think we should beat that deck very often, but eh, they had a lot of they had a lot of uh, a lot of hate again. Cole gets command coming to historic. Historic is in a really weird place right now. Historic. The problem with historic is. Oh. After last game, I kind of want to keep this hand, but this is the kind of hand where they just bolt your bird and then you do nothing. Nothing for infinity. Ugh. Yeah, I've, I try to avoid saying getting unlucky because it can come across salty. So that's been something I've been trying to... I've been trying to shy away from because I think, yeah, it comes across to some people as being salty or, or whatever. Sometimes I do it with like, a, with, with even like the hypergeometric calculator thing, which I think is interesting and funny. Even that apparently comes across as, uh, is complaining. And I don't know, maybe, maybe it is to some extent, but how soon will you guys be doing Viewer Submitted Commander Clash? Uh, viewer Submitted Commander Clash recording is on Thursday. So I think you have to have your deck in by... Have to have your deck in by Wednesday to, uh, to have it considered for Viewer Submitted Week. But yeah, definitely send your deck in. That'd be super sweet. Oh, potent. Oh boy. Heliod combo. Well, we're going to have to combo quickly. If we're going to race our opponent. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Well, maybe the reason I thought that Ulamog was in the sideboard to beat, or Kozilek was in the sideboard to beat Mill, maybe we're supposed to be casting it. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the plan is that we, whoever built the deck is like, man, this deck tends to have like 20 mana on the battlefield somehow. Maybe we should just hard cast an Eldrazi sometimes. Dryad of the Ilsen Grove. And another land. Oh, it's green white Valica. Ugh. Well, this would be a nice turn to draw Yagmoth. We could take a Yagmoth here. Opponent. Temple Garden. Another Utopia Sprawl. And Well, that is a Yagmoth. I mean that is our our best draw. It doesn't win us the game here. We're a creature short of actually winning the game. But we will play a Yagmoth. 
We will pass the turn. Had to pull out the calculator the first time the other day when I was playing Amy Light Trying to do four lands in a uh drew four lands in a 35 land deck. Yeah, that's uh that's not many. <laughs> Yagmas Hospital is uh a name from other people. I'm not the first person to think of Yagmas Hospital. Opponent going off with the cats. This is a a spicy a spicy something that our opponent's doing. Uh, opponent passes. Come on, undying creature. Oh, all right. Well. That should mean we win. Theoretically. In theory. Play land. Crack the land. Thin the deck. Overgrow tube. Untapped. Wall of roots. And... Rolf Spencer? And... Counter on you... Sag you. Drain ya. Yeah. All right, there's a the combo. Oh, all right. When we have a Yagba, things go much better. <laughs> and a bonus scoops it up. That seems to be the, the solution. We gotta have the Yagba. Is this Marin's deck? Uh, no. This deck has been around for... This is a deck that's been around for a long time. I think we actually played this deck. Or, yeah, we played this deck, I think, at one point. Jeez. Gotta be a year or two ago. No time of need. We have Eldritch Evolutions and Court of Calling as our, as our main ways to find it. I want to say that... I mean, I don't think he created the deck, but if I was going to associate one person with... Maybe popularizing this deck. I think it's Tom Ross. That's... I don't think Tom... I, I'm actually like 100% sure that Tom Ross didn't originally build it. And that it was originally played by someone on Moto that probably no one's... No one really knows. But uh, but yeah, I associate with Tom uh, Ross. Hey, what's up, Monster? How are you? Going to be sending you a list for Commander Clash that I finished building specifically because you hate on a Commander during spoiler season so hard that I was super excited for. Ooh, wait. I, what commander did I hate on? I don't remember hating really hard on on a commander. Hmm. I'm curious to see the deck now. Uh, I don't know what our opponent's doing, honestly. I mean, I assume Rex Age comes in. You would think it was some sort of like green white Valakut deck, but I don't think you can play Valakut in a in a deck that has Utopia Sprawl. That would be awkward. I guess we can try Force of Vigor. Abrupt Decay. Possibly Abrupt Decay. Uh, go down you, go down you. Yeah, Abrupt Decay gets rid of Dryad at least. And maybe Hate Cards. Gotta expect the Hate Cards. We've played against so many of them. Uh... Actually, Rankle, Rankle does not feel very good in this deck. Maybe we just haven't hit the right matchups for Rankle, but it doesn't feel very good. Oh, Felidary Tree. Oh, I have no... Uh, I have no idea. I uh, I haven't seen the deck. It could be. You don't see too many Felidary... Uh, you don't see too many Felidary retreats in Modern, so... Did you mean to cut an Undying Wolf? Yeah, I meant to go down one of them. Just a little bit of trimming. I think we have enough enough Undying Wolves that we should be able to get away with trimming one of them and still uh, still combo. Other people were talking about it being our announcement today. Is that happening? Um, well, I guess it's... Uh, I guess it's Strangle Root time. And, yeah, you know, let's just go attacking. Wow, is this... Is this still Heliod combo? This feels like it has a lot of Heliod combo cards, but then it also has random cards I've never seen before. Um, wait, what were we talking about? Oh, bannings. There is no banning that has been announced today. There, there was... 
some talk about the possibility of a Manning in, in historic with how dominant the Tainted Pact Oracle combo was this weekend. And, I mean, I think... And also Wizard said, like... Essentially, they said, we're going to release all these mystical archives, and then we're probably going to have to ban some. So we know it's it's on the radar, the possibility of a banning. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. One, two, three, one, two... So we can't win right now. We're actually pretty close. Have you played Pat Combo on stream? We did play it a little bit on stream. Just ban Oracle. I am definitely a believer of banning Oracle. Or for me, Oracle's the problem card. Like Oracle Oracle has caused problems in Pioneer. It's called problems in Commander. And now it's part of a combo that's causing problems in Historic. At some point when you keep having different combos with different cards in different formats all need to be banned you gotta look at Thassa's Oracle being the thing that kind of <laughs> that kind of ties all those together it's really funny because they're like well and and Pioneer will ban Inverter and we'll ban this and Commander I don't know if they'll end up banning it like I think honestly from a CDH perspective I think Thassa's Oracle should be banned in Commander I think in casual it's mostly fine because people just kind of rule zero it out or you know the social aspects of commander keep people from doing it but in all honesty like if you want to win a commander game demonic consultation thassa's oracle like if your goal is to win you should put that in 100 percent of decks that have your colors in commander uh but the only thing that keeps that from happening like crim plays those colors a ton but he doesn't play the combo because we're playing you know casual commander that wouldn't be fun for everyone but Yeah, two card, three mana win the game. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty decent. Pretty strong. Um, hmm. I don't know what we're doing here, honestly. We can Elder Shed Illusion. This is where rank would actually probably be good. <laughs> um. Well, you know what? Let's go to combat attack. I think we just play Hypatra. Play a Patra pass, and that sets us up to try to go infinite tokens next turn. Get down a Patra. Opponent gains a life. Pass the turn. Well, we'll see what they do. If our opponent just tabs out for, like, Felidary Retreat, I think they just lose. Yeah, no Aladrami's call either. I have no idea what our opponent's deck's doing. I really don't. It's like a mixture of a bunch of things I've seen in various decks, but I have not seen anyone put them all together. Yeah, I don't know what the upside of... I don't know what the upside of Oracle is, honestly. Do you happen to know where you got the sleeves used in last game's Commander Clash? They were, or last week's Commander Clash, they were super sweet. I do not know where I got those. Okay, well, I think that does it. I'm like 99% sure that I bought a collection years ago. I bought a collection and they just happened to, and they just happened to come with that collection. I will, I will try to figure it out though, if you're around tomorrow. Uh, all right, let's, Eldritch Evolution's Rangaroo Geist. Opponent gains a life. I guess we don't win because of Oriok Champion gaining life. Uh, get Yagmoth. Opponent gains a life. Yeah, they actually, we don't win here. We do get to draw a lot of cards and do a lot of things and make a lot of tokens, but we don't win until another turn or two. Darken, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, get in and hit you. I think we want to do this on our opponent's turn, though. I guess we can do it a little bit now. Yeah, we might as well do it a little bit now until our hand is full and then do it the rest on our opponent's turn. Because our opponent's going to gain... 
two life every time we go through the loop, and we're going to lose a life. <laughs> so we're definitely not killing our opponent here, that's for sure. We do get to make a lot of snakes and draw a lot of cards. Uh, counter on this, sack this. Uh, this has pro black, so we can't actually, we can't actually target it, unfortunately. Yeah, if we could kill it, that would make it super easy. Another snake, another land, counter on this, sack this. I don't think Messenger actually wins the game either. Although, the core does have potential. Is there anything we can cord for that wins, though? Oh, I guess we can cord... <laughs> Is there? Is there a cord target that wins us the game? Messenger doesn't win us the game. Well, cord. One, two, three, four, five... Well, let's Cordex 4. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Kate Sliver, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big stream over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Take Zulaport Cutthroat. Now return to the combo. So this makes it so we don't die. Wow, this is convoluted. This is so convoluted. <laughs> I love it. Oh, this is so good. Okay, counter on you. Draw a card. Make a snake. Sack you. We're still not winning here, though. We're getting all these lands. So I think we want to cord one more time. And also get Essence Warden? Wait, why do you want to kill Hapatra? <laughs> oh, ridiculous! Ridiculous! Well, that's what the deck can do when it all comes together. Like, it does... It just does have so many neat synergies. There's only one cutthroat. I wonder how many of the cards, if we had a second one. Zulaport into... Yeah, I guess Zulaport plus a Giralf's Messenger. Opponent's gaining two, but we're hitting for three. And we're not dying because we have Zulaport Cutthroat. So I think what we do there is... Yeah, I think Messenger... Would we have milled out? <laughs> would we have milled out trying to pull it off? I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, I think once we got... Once we had Hapatra and we had Zulaport Cutthroat and we had a Dross Messenger, it would have been enough. <laughs> Oh, but the snakes are the fun part. Hey, thank you, Nijun. Yeah, I like this shirt, too. Oh, I've, I've been trying to figure out... Uh, I've been trying to figure out if I want to go to Riot Fest. What's your, what's your advice, chat? I don't know. Ah, I don't know. They finally... They finally announced the full lineup. Do you think it's do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's worth it? So I mean the big one so uh nine inch nails. That'd be cool. I've never seen nine inch nails. That'd be cool. Smashing pumpkins. Overrated. Overrated. <laughs> but I mean, I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind seeing Smashing Pumpkins, although I do think they're pretty overrated. Uh, run the jewels. They're kind of interesting. Pixies, I would really want to see. Uh, Faith No More would probably be interesting. Dev Devo? I mean, Whip It was a cool song. <laughs> but I can't imagine watching a whole set of Devo. Like, can you imagine a whole set of Devo? Do they just play Whip It over and over again? Are there actually, do they write more songs than Whip It? Uh, Mr. Bungle is also kind of interesting. Uh, weird, uh, weird-ish old rock band. A bunch of, a bunch of, uh, old school emo bands. Oh, uh, I forgot all about Taking Sunday until, until this, I actually looked him up, and as soon as I clicked on their song, I was like, oh no, I, I so remember, I so remember listening to this. Oh. <laughs> uh, Devo has a ton of good songs. 
Yeah, Faith on Warren Mr. Bungle would be sweet. Sublime with Rome is cool. I never really got that much into Coheed, although I had I had some friends that were like super into them. Like their favorite band. Uh so I've heard their stuff, but I've never been never been super big into it. So Devo does have more songs than just Whip It. Okay. Well, that would make me more interested in watching a Devo show. Yeah. Go Go Bordello is actually one of the bands that I'd be really excited to see. That would be that would be high on my on my list. And I probably would enjoy some of the old emo bands. Like Take You Back Sunday. I don't know. When I when I turned on their music after not listening to it forever, I was like, all right, this this I, I still know the I still know most of the words to this. <laughs> I haven't listened to this band in I don't even know how long. Fifteen years or some ridiculous long amount of time. I was like, oh, okay, I, I I still remember all this. Yep. The Pixies would be they're kinda like a a bucket list style band. Like Pixies I've never seen and they're a band that I would really wanna see. So so yeah, Pixies would be a draw. Uh, Gogo Burdello would also be a would be a draw for me. Huh. One, two, three. Well, play Peatland. Go. Opponents down to nine. Thankfully, we have a nine blockers. We need the Yagmoth. Yagmoth would be sweet. Watching our old videos for like four years. That's the first time I've actually made your stream all day, your day. Well, good to have you. Oh yeah, I guess it's still uh, as close as we're as close as we're gonna get. That's actually an interesting question. How about this chat? Uh, assuming assuming you like music, what's what's the one band that's like? I guess you're like bucket list band. Someone that you're like, okay, like these these people are probably not gonna be playing music forever. I really want to see them. Someone you haven't seen before that you really want to see. That you really want to see before, uh, why you have the chance. Daft Punk? Weird Al. I actually unironically like Weird Al. Part of it is, part of it is <laughs> that I, uh, my grandmother used to play it when I was, uh, I was a kid, so there's probably some nostalgia there. But I actually think that Weird Al is really good at, at what he does. What he does is obviously really goofy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I don't think he's, like, a great musician or something. But... I actually, I actually think Weirdell's really talented. What do you know? Oh, Weezer? Oh, Weezer. Weezer would leave me disappointed now, I'm sure. Like, uh, they would leave me disappointed. Speaking of disappointed, I saw Dylan a few years ago. Oh, my goodness. I, that was someone who was like, oh, Dylan. Okay, like, I really like Dylan. I've never seen Dylan. So I go to see Dylan, and it was so mumbly and incomprehensible. It was, it was so, it was just so bad. So I, I feel like Weezer would be like that for me. If I went to see Weezer, I'd just be thinking like, oh man, imagine if I had seen them 20 years ago. Childish Gambino I really like. I've been I've been getting more and more into rap. The rap and like uh, R&B and so forth, which is something that I just never really got into rap. I used to think that I didn't like rap. And then I realized it's not that I didn't like rap, it's that I only heard crappy rap. <laughs> but there actually is really good rap. Just like every other style of music, but you gotta you gotta find the the good the good rap. Well, I wasn't I wasn't actually referring to Weird Al when I was talking about rap, but <laughs> I think for me for me it would probably be the number one like buggy list band would probably be Tom Waits. I've never seen Tom Waits. I know Tom Waits is like actually at least semi retired. And I don't know if there's ever a chance that I'll get to see him again. I might not actually have the opportunity to see him. But if if Tom Waits goes on tour, that's some that's a show that I would travel for to to see. MF Doom's really good. Immortal Technique, uh, I've been listening to quite a bit lately. I I like uh I guess I like rappers that are like smart and have a large vocabulary. Yeah, Tom Waits is, is number one. So we'll see. We'll see if I actually ever get the chance to do it. We're good at drawing lands. Ooh, still good at drawing lands. I don't play this. Crack it. 
Big draw, big draw, big draw. Please, a big draw. Yagmoth? That is Yagmoth. That is interesting. I don't think this wins the game. Okay, there's a Yagmoth. Oh, what do we do with it? What do we do? All right, pass the turn. All right, don't, do not kill our Yagmoth opponent, I swear. I swear, if you fatal put their Yagmoth, it's on. Opponent passes. Opponent. Goes to combat. Attacks, attacks. So we can do cool tricks here. We block and block. And then we, oh, this is actually kind of sweet. So we block and block. Then we put a counter on this. We sack this. We lose nothing. Quinzella Blanco in Trexas Chiro. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much. Aesop Rock's really good. Thank you uh, so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and then we put a counter on this. Sack this. Ha ha. We will take zero. And there's your off messenger. Oh, there goes Jarl's Messenger. Sure. About it. I mean, we get to draw so many cards, though. Down to six. I think we got it. I think we got it. What card are you looking forward to in Anthology 5? Dragonstorm's the card I'm most looking forward to building a deck around. Although, there's a lot of cards in the deck that I... Uh, a lot of cards in the set that I think are, are sweet. Like, the commands are sweet... I think Elish Norn will be interesting as a Praetor. I think that there's some cool stuff for the Hardened, uh, not Hardened Scales, um, Tempered Steel deck. Whether or not that's enough to make the deck good, I don't know, but uh, Grizzly Salvage is a card that I've just always loved. So there's, I actually think this, wow, we're not drawing much, are we? Opponent scoops it up. All right. Uh, I actually think that it's a pretty solid looking, a pretty solid looking anthology. I mean, if you compare it to, where's Historic Anthology 4? Historic Anthology 4. Like, look at Historic Anthology 4. Historic Anthology 4 had dud, okay, good. Dud, or at least mostly a dud. Dud, dud. Dud, sweet against the odds card, but not competitive. Sword, dud, dud. Dud, 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 dud. Should have already been reprinted in one of the past sets. Not good, not good. Good, goodish, good. Meh, dud, dud. Fun, but dud. Dud, dud. So it was like. It was just not very good. There was a couple of good against the odds cards. There was like two or three Death Shadows in here somewhere, too. There's Death Shadow. There was like, I guess, Death Shadow, Thraben Inspector, Sword of Declaration in Stone, but not even really. Cold Steel Heart, sort of like Blink Moth or Inspiring Statuary were playable cards. Comparing that to Historic Anthology 5, I feel like this is way more exciting like sideboard staple constructed staple maybe if tempered uh if uh, tempered seal is good against the odds card constructed potential potential constructed staple good constructed card okay constructed card in the future maybe probably constructed card praetor constructed card for sure mostly jank fringe good sideboard card good sideboard card maybe constructed potential but probably not after mystical archives another praetor maybe slumgar's command fun jank build around fun jank build around tempered steel better than it looks i feel like this is way better than the last one the other thing that's interesting this is only uh, four thousand gems when i feel like how much was this one was it the it was 4,000 gems. It, look at just, like, the difference in card quality. With the last one, you got a mythic. <laughs> Your mythics were a sword. Triumphant Reckoning, which doesn't see play in any format ever. And that was it. So you got two mythics. 
In this one, you get the whole cycle of Praetors, and it's the same price. And you get the whole cycle of Commands, which are legit cards. So I feel like this is way, way better. Oh my god, 20 seconds. Oh, this is not going well. Oh, what are we even playing against now? Oh, Death Shadow. Oh, oh we're going to run out of time. We're going to run out of time. We're going to run out of time. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll bring in that. We'll bring in that. We'll bring in that. We'll go down one of these. Random sideboarding, because we're already out of time. Three seconds. We got distracted. We got distracted. Oh, but does it look so much better? Doesn't it look like they really improved it compared to the last one? So I feel like it's better value. It's better cards. Like all around, it's better than last than the last uh, the last version of Historic Anthology, I would say. All right. If we finish this match with a win, we get the kids a, a little snack. Just a little snack. But that would give us a winning record. I actually feel like this deck's pretty good. We had some pretty close, somewhat hilarious losses earlier. Well, over to untapped. And the noblest of hierarchs. Go. There needs to be a historic brawl all the time. <laughs> there really does. I mentioned that in the article that I wrote about... About doing the brawl event to get the card styles. Briefly, but... That might have to be something that we really, that we really, uh, that we really force Wizard's hand on and bring up, and bring up a, a few times because that really, uh, there's no excuse. My take is that historic, that brawl should be historic. That it's not even like they should have an historic brawl queue. A overwhelming majority of people who play brawl want brawl to be historic. Like it's, there was a poll that we did on, that I did on Twitter, and it is a huge, huge majority. Like, way more people play, play historic brawl than play the wizard standard version of brawl. So that's what I want to see. I don't want to see a, a queue. I don't want to see a cue to make... And if we're going to crack it, crack it. I don't want to see a cue to make Historic Brawl come around. I want to see Brawl be historic. Really should compare to 3 vs 1, not 4. Since most anything looks good compared to Wizards carrying back the prior one. Ooh. Hmm. 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 That's an interesting draw. I'll play the land. Play Giralf's Messenger. And I think this theoretically sets us up for the win if there's no discard. The combo kill next turn. No discard, no graveyard hate. Play a Tarmogoy for something. Potent shocks himself. One card in hand. What are the chances I meet you have two rare land cycles? Wait. What are the chances I have two rare land cycles? Yeah, we gotta take it. I think the chances of two rare land cycles are very, very slim. A uh, dog of myth with a gift sub to Staly Cell. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big huge show for you. My, uh, yeah, I think two rare land cycles seems very unlikely. I think that a rare land cycle and that should be game and that should be the kids eating. About it passes. So we will one, two, no. One, one, two. Strangle Rugeist. Urborg. Eldritch Evolution. Sacking. Doesn't matter. Strangle Rugeist. Hugathan! Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Yogmoth for the hospital egg. Count around you, thank you. And. That should do it. Opponent goes to six. We draw a card. And opponent scoops it up. 
This deck is good. The deck is actually the deck is actually good. We had some rough running along the way. Uh, a that top deck lost against elves with all the hate cards. But I think the deck's actually actually pretty competitive, and it's really unique, and it's it's just fun. It's a fun deck. This is. And we got a treasure chest to open, but this is exactly what I love about Modern Horizons. I don't know if you saw the article or video over the weekend. What's your take on Modern Horizons? Like, my take is, I would rather deal with Hogax, even if they break the format for a couple of months, if it means we're gonna get decks like Yagmoth and Soul Herder and all the other all the other decks that kind that came out of it, like. I think this is a fun deck, a fair deck, a cool deck. I don't know. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth. Uh, I think it's worth the cost. But let's uh, let's crack our treasure chest. We get Door of Destinies and Curiosity Crafter. I wonder if this Commander card is worth anything. Curiosity Crafter, Magic Online, eh, a dollar forty-five. So not insane, but not horrible. Oh, all right, I wanna, I wanna try. I don't think we'll get through the entire league because, because of the podcast. I gotta, I gotta upload the podcast in, the, in like an hour. But I think we gotta finally try this deck because tomorrow we're not playing modern. Tomorrow is viewer battle day. Now that everyone's here, another reminder. So tomorrow's stream. 2 p.m. Eastern, so 22 hours from now, we are going to do viewer battles on Arena. So that means if you get a sweet standard deck or historic deck and you want to battle against me, this is your chance. So if you want to try to lock in a slot, send me an email, saffronoliveemptyoldfish.com, uh, and just let me know that you want to do it what format you want to play, and your arena info, your arena name and the numbers so I can challenge you. And uh, we will do a bunch of challenges and play sweet historic and standard decks tomorrow. But let's get it some tooth and nail as much as we can before I got to go upload the podcast. So if you don't know tooth and nail, this is a ramp deck. We also have turn spheres. And that's one of the things that kind of appeals to me about this deck so our main combo ramp 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 as aggressively as possible to get to tooth and nail if we could cast tooth and nail for nine mana with entwine and have it resolve we get xenagos to give something haste and double its power we get emerkel and we just annihilate our opponent out of the game 30 power hasty emerkel win the game the cool part about the deck is we also have like trinisphere we also have Plow Wonder to put our opponent's lands on the top of their deck. We have Maroon Acid Moss to destroy lands and to ramp us. We can do loops where we Eternal Witness to get back Primal Command, to get an Eternal Witness, to get a Primal Command, and landlock our opponent that way. So we kind of have this like land destruction, mono green prison, Trinisphere sub theme to go along with our Oops, I cast a tooth and nail with Entwine, you lose. We also have Vorinclex in the sideboard to ultimate our planes. Blockers. We got World Breakers and Hornet Queens, so we can even go down the Tooth and Nail if we need to and bring in a bunch of creatures. So let's let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Have you tested this list at all? This is a list that someone uh, that someone 5 0 would, so I have not played a game with the deck, but <laughs> someone has. The only change I made was adding another Trinosphere to the sideboard because, I mean, it's a Trinosphere. I actually would, I kind of want to just form the main deck, but we don't have any card draws, so we probably can't get away with it. Uh, Tooth, and I will update the deck list command as well. But yeah, so someone, someone played it and had success with it. Hey, thanks, Dolly. Uh, it's a acid moss, obviously. <laughs> what what did you think I said? <laughs> if you had any said historic, what set would it be? Ooh, so is this like for the good of historic or for my own selfish reasons? If I was gonna add one set to historic that I think would hmm What would improve historic? I uh, this okay, you want the controversial answer? I would add I would add cons and allow the fetch lands to be legal. Cons, fetch lands, elder dragons, dump them all in there. But really, if I was just gonna add a set for me because I enjoyed it, it would probably be. Eh, let's 
let's let's let's get a little bit wild. I was gonna say Scars of Mirrodin, but uh, but I think I'm gonna say I think I'm gonna say New Phyrexia. Let let's go. I mean, I'm a big fan of bannings and suspensions in historic. So let's go all the way. Let's put one of the most busted sets in. Let's add in Phyrexian mana and batter skulls and more swords and just just uh just go just go crazy. I mean, Alpha would be interesting. <laughs> I mean, if you really wanna, if you really wanna break it, I think you throw in a, you throw in Alpha, Power Nine, uh, and that's about it. Power Nine and a lot of bad cards. <laughs> hmm, we're on the draw. We are on the draw. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, I'm so tempted to keep this. I'm so tempted. Oh, uh, I really want to do it mostly because I know you're going to freak out, Jet. But in all honesty, if we just top deck a land, Arbralf, Utopia, Sprawl, two Wall of Roots, Garrick, we have a ridiculous amount of mana. Like, if we top deck a single land, this hand's great. Uh, I don't think we can do it, though, because we're going to auto lose. What set do you want to see added? I don't think we can actually keep it. If it was one land, I would love this hand, but uh oh. Hmm. Well, apparently the magic gods really want us to keep a zero lander. All right, we're doing it. You can't fight the magic gods. You can't fight the magic gods. If they're just going to keep giving us zero landers, I mean, we got to we gotta keep it. We don't, we don't have a choice. Oh boy, and our opponent, oh no. Oh, we're, we're in trouble now. Well, even if we draw land, we're in trouble because they burn down our Arbor Elves. All right, give us that forest. Oh, if this is a, the blast zone, oh dear. Okay, you're, your go. <laughs> Uh, I mean, our five card hand probably wasn't going to be very good anyway. <laughs> well, what do we learn? What do we learn about keeping zero landers? <laughs> but how do you how do you know unless you try it? It's actually not a very land heavy deck. I think it's twenty. Oh, opponent get in hits us. If we don't draw land here, then we're going to scoop, and then our opponent's not going to know what we're doing. And it'll all be part of the plan to get them to sideboard poorly. Ooh, double Rift Bolt. Ah! <laughs> all right, four Arbor Elves. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, well, Weather the Storm seems important to our deck. And... Oh, Dismember is so painful. Yeah, I guess that's it. Right? Well, actually, Trinosphere seems insane, too. Trinosphere's in, Weather the Storm's in. We'll go down Nissa World Waker, which I don't know why it's in the deck. We'll go down an Eternal Witness. Uh, yeah, I guess promo art. We'll go down a uh, Acid Moss and, uh, and run like that. <laughs> yeah, 20 lands is not that many. We have a ton of ramp to go with it. Some MDFCs could be good, but what MDFC would we play? The mythic one, hitting Emrakul would be sweet, but we don't have that many creatures, and most of them are one drops, two drops. <laughs> Mama <Ma> Moss. <laughs> this, uh, this last year, I've been feeling more and more frustrated with wizards. I feel like they don't care about LGS or dedicate players at all. They only seem to care about the copious amounts of money coming in from endless casual players. Well, I once <laughs> boy, that's that's such a that's such a big loaded a big loaded topic. I mean, the promo art's sweet, but tattoo art is even sweeter. And old border always wins, no matter what. Uh, if it's old border, it wins. So, so I mean, uh, I like the I like the promo art, but eh, not tattoo art, not old border. So that is that is such a. That is such a, a tough question. So, 
Is it that Wizards doesn't care about dedicated franchise players in local game stores? Is it that they have always cared a lot about those players and they're trying to rebalance as I think this would be their argument is we've always cared really a, a lot about the really dedicated players, but we need to reach out more to the le- to the casual players. And maybe that feels to the more enfranchised dedicated players that they are, you know, not caring about them when wizards would say, well, we still care. We're just trying to, you know, we're trying to reach out to this other group that was underserved. I think that, and this is something I've been thinking about a lot with the OP stuff and whatnot, but I actually think there's, I think there's like two magic communities. There's the really dedicated and franchise community, which I would say includes all of you. You're watching a magic stream. That makes you more dedicated than like 99% of magic players, pros, content producers, uh, the people that are, you know, interacting on Reddit and Twitter and Facebook about magic all the time. And then there's the the other the other group, which is probably much bigger than our enfranchise group, which is people who never talk about magic and never play in tournaments and never watch streams or YouTube videos for the most part. Where where that ends up, I don't know. I do I do know what you're saying, and I do kind of feel the same way that wizards is moving in a different direction and the direction that they're moving is away from the dedicated and franchise players for the most part like i feel i feel that as well we see that with op we see that with content creator stuff which uh which wizards is cutting stuff in we see that with the products they're printing that are often we have seen stuff for enfranchised players i would say time Star remastered is a very much a set for like dedicated old school players but we do see a lot of secret layer drops walking lead secret uh, walking dead secret layer drops that are obviously geared way more towards other groups that are not the traditional dedicated magic player where it all ends up i don't know so I could definitely empathize and I, I definitely do know what you're saying. I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing. I don't know if it's that we, the enfranchised players, think we're more important than we are and Wizards has catered to us too much and they should be going more after the the more like casual crowd that has not been focused on very much. Or if Wizards is being super greedy and they know that they have the enfranchised crowd already and they might as well they know they're already getting our money they they know they can cut the they can cut the early access day they can not say anything about the green light fund for content creation stuff they can do all that and more and they know i'm gonna stream magic and i'm gonna talk about magic and i'm gonna play magic because uh because they already got me they already they already figured that part out so maybe it's a a super smart business move by wizards because they 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 know we're already all hooked so they might as well trust that we're gonna stay hooked and try to go after a different crowd that isn't uh as hooked as we are while I agree with what you've said over how we value how much player base we are, Wizards undervalues how much we bring. Would EGH exist if not for content creators and franchise players forcing into existence? What about Brawl having permanent queues on Arena with casual players, historic wild cards? Oh no, I think that's I think that's I think that's true. And I I definitely think that that this is gonna come. This is gonna sound wrong, but hopefully you know what I'm saying. That that we are more valuable. Like if you just look at the amount of money a heavily dedicated and franchise player spends on the game, or the amount of time, or how they promote the game, compared to someone who bought a pack and then or a pre-con deck at Walmart and played a couple games on their kitchen table, there's really no comparison. So there's no doubt that a heavily dedicated enfranchised player is more valuable to Wizards than someone who bought a pre-con deck, played a couple times on their kitchen table, and that was the extent of their magic experience. So there's certainly value there. I think that maybe what Wizards wants is to take those people who bought a pack at Walmarts or a pre-con deck at Walmarts and played a couple games on 
their kitchen table and try to get them to join the dedicated enfranchise group. Like, I, I kind of, yeah, this, this isn't going to work. Too slow, too slow. When a rap deck fizzles, it fizzles real hard. It'll be, it'll be interesting. I, I don't know what the future holds as far as magic. This is a question, a, a little, a little teaser spoiler for the podcast, which is going to be going up shortly. Yeah, we can't even cast anything. Well, apparently Goblin Guide Tron, pretty good Tron. So this is, this is a question that came up on the podcast, and I'm very curious what you think about it. Um, hey Seth, I just arrived. I presume we've talked about anthology and how sweet Cold's command is in historic. Yeah, Cold's command is going to be very good at historic, especially with faithful suiting running around, pyromancers, witches. Here's a question I have: Do you think that? Do you think that uh, that pro magic players matter? This is something I've been trying to figure out. Like. And by this, I I strongly believe organized play matters. I think there needs to be a way to go play tournaments. There needs to be competitive aspects of Magic. I am 100% convinced that that matters. But does having, like, a group of people who are professionals, like, does that actually matter? And I've been trying to think it through. And, like, what are the, what are the benefits? What are the drawbacks? What does having pro Magic players offer? How much of your excitement for something like a for something like a GP? How much of that is getting to see a pro? Like, is is that something that matters to you? Because that's the main thing I could I was thinking. Like, obviously, having the MPL play against each other doesn't really do a whole lot because no one watches it and cares about it. We kind of saw proof of that, and that's I'm sure Wizards could have organized it way better to maybe have a different outcome, but I'm actually not sure. Maybe Magic just is destined to never be an eSport because Wow's tech is a mulligany. Because uh, it's a little slow. It's not easy for new players to grasp. Maybe it's never going to be able to get there. But, like, is that a draw for tournaments? Let's say you hear about GP Vegas and you're thinking about going. Is like, I might be able to play against Reed Duke or LSV. Like, is that is that a reason for you to go to the tournaments? Because I, I assume that it is for some people. But then maybe the, uh, maybe the pros will still... Maybe the pros will still go, and you'll still get to see them, even if there isn't, like, a gold club or a platinum club or the MPL. What does this have to do with one over another? Why can't Wizards cater to both demos? Oh, no, did... Okay, I was afraid we skipped our turn. No, I think Wizards should uh, should cater to both demos. I think so. I guess let's. I guess the question is this: is let's say there's two there's two choices for organized play. One is for Wizards to pay pay money to like the MPL to show up to tournaments and to do their streams and whatnot. Like so, that's that's one potential pathway forward. Wow. I can't believe they're, we're going to Eldrazi Tron us and actually have Tron. So that's one that's one pathway. Wizards gives a salary of $100,000 to, you know, 50 people or something. Or whatever that ends up being. The other possibility would be maybe they up the prize pool for, like, GPs and tournaments. And the same amount of money's there. But instead of, oh, come on now. Oh, come on now, Eldrazi Tron. Boo and his. But instead of having, like, a guaranteed income as a as a pro player, you you basically have to perform in tournaments, more or less, to to actually to actually get the money. Do you think that's better or worse? Speedwagon, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tron, 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 Tron. Pro players existing matters as they're the carrot that wizards dangles in front of grinders and aspiring players. Each pro individually doesn't matter. Yeah, I think that's actually a very interesting point too, is 
is does the possibility of becoming a pro matter? Oh, I missed your sub. My apologies, Gutter Snipe. Uh, Gutter Snipe, welcome to the fishbowl for the ninth month. Thank you for your subscription. Big super here for you. Maybe I'm missing something, but if they, uh, but if like they said, there was still BGQs in PTQ events, how? Does the ending of pros affect 99% of players that play Magic and go to events for fun rather than looking to make a living off of Magic? Um, I... Oh, no. How does Eldrazi Trout keep... Keep Assembly Tron? That's not how this works. That's not how this works. And having Karn. Oh, dear. Um... So I don't think it does directly. I think I think the question is whether, kind of like what we were talking about, wow, they are going to, they really are going to do it. Come on, Maroon Acid Moss, no deal. Oh, boy. When this deck runs bad, it runs am amazingly bad. Like, we're just doing nothing. Nothing and nothing and nothing. Opponent cracks the expedition map. Yikes. You love Tron. Oh, no one loves Tron. Opponent. Land. Thought not Seer. Aldrazi Tron getting Tron makes me so salty. Tron getting Tron. That's what they're supposed to do. Aldrazi Tron getting Tron. Salt, salt, salt. Uh, I tried Floral Heater on my Belladros yesterday. Had a turn four Belladros, and I'm a believer. Ah, oh, I'm good. I'm glad that people are coming uh, coming around. We draw a another land. Well, we will play a Nissa. Well, I guess we turn on a forest and lose our Nissa. Would sinkhole be too strong? Would it? <laughs> I don't know. That was a uh, that was an incredibly frustrating match. <laughs> uh... Hmm. Aldrazi Tron getting Tron is my least favorite thing in Magic, I think. It's at least on the short list. They just don't try. They don't try. Look at it. Look at the deck list. They have four expedition maps and just random lands. And it's just like, doo doo doo, drunkenly walking around and they stumble into Tron and it's, it's, uh, it's the best thing ever. Compared to like real Tron. Real Tron, they work really hard. They work really hard. And as much as I I dislike getting Tron regardless, when you when you look at traditional Tron, all it's doing is ancient stirring, Sylvan Scrying, Expedition Map, eight cantrips. Like his entire deck is just dedicated to finding this, so ugh. That's why it always makes me salty when Eldrazi Tron just Maybe this deck is horrible. How did someone 5 0 with this? <laughs> wow, this deck has felt so clunky. Uh, well, we'll keep this. Oh, uh, we've never actually. I don't think we've ever played this deck before. Mono Green Prison is sweet. This is not Mono Green Prison. This is a. This is a tooth and nail deck. This deck. Oh, boy. <laughs> I feel like we've drawn like eight. Primal commands and no ramp spells. We haven't really played much magic with this deck. <laughs> looking looking like a meme. It, it very well might be. Oh my goodness, it's a it's a ramp spell. Well, Utopia's brawl. Well, I think the equation has changed. Now the question is not is this deck good? The question is can we cast a tooth and nail once before our stream in league ends? Oh, uh, we did our we did our Yagmoth league. We finished with a with a three two with Yagmoth. Should have been a should have been a four one. But uh, anyone upset that CFP is behind a paywall these days? 
Uh, I mean, people... Sites gotta do what they gotta do, I guess. I... Personally, I strongly dislike paywalls. On a, on a personal level. And I, in general... Don't... Don't subscribe to paywall content. Just cause... I just don't like it. But... I have no idea what the the situation is at any site, and if that's what you got to do to to stay in business, then I guess that's what you got to do. But I don't think there's any risk of goldfish ever ever going paywally, because I know Richard also strongly, similar to me, strongly dislikes paywalls. So must mulligan aggressively for Arbor Elf and Utopia Sprawl. Huh. I mean, we have mulligan a lot. I don't know. <laughs> huh. A land would be sweet. Imagine <laughs> Imagine casting a primal command. Annex Madrano. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What's going to happen with the Hall of Fame now? I don't think anyone knows. That's one of those topics where where wizards I think it was last August. They said they're getting rid of the Hall of Fame, but they're gonna have a we're gonna have a sweeter, better Hall of Fame in 2021. And uh, what is it, May of 2021? And we have not heard anything about it yet. So I don't know. It's one of those things that makes me nervous about the OP announcement because you never know if there's gonna actually be a follow up or not. <laughs> If you keep a hand with neither of those, you will lose most of the time. Uh, opponent goes attacking. Well, I mean, I do think that mulliganing somewhat aggressively makes sense, but... I mean, in this case, we ha we have a Utopia Sprawl and we're still not doing anything. I wonder if 20 lands is... 20 lands seems a, a little... Actually, a lot on the greedy side. <laughs> 20 lands trying to resolve a 9-mana spell. That might be... That might be going a little bit too far. Modern Horizon spoilers start a week from today officially, although there's going to be spoilers during the Watsi stream on Thursday, which might mean we don't have a which might mean we don't have a stream Thursday. We'll have to wait and see. I'm not sure. It might be it might be doing daily spoilers, but uh we will play it by ear. Oh yeah, there's a. I'm sure you can find a lot of things, uh, a lot of things in arena that wizards change their minds on. Let's say generously. Met Doctor, Mister Doctor Matt. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Santa's not look especially helpful. I wonder, hmm, this might be one of those decks that's worth, uh, oh, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Woo! Wow! This might be the worst deck we've played in a long time. Rock and Roll Dew, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, this, look at this curve. Look at this curve. Man, whoever went 5-0 and must have just ran incredibly hot. Like, they must have just ran incredibly well. Yeah, looking at this on paper, like, look at these piles. This is the stuff that costs less than 3 mana. This is the stuff that costs 4 or 5 mana. <laughs> I mean... No wonder we have a lot of draws where we're just holding a handful of five drops and doing nothing. I guess it makes sense when you actually when you actually look at look at the deck. 
it is very much just uh just kind of hoping for the best i guess all right we're gonna go down some eternal witnesses we're gonna go down sadly some plow wonders bring in some removal and uh try it like that yeah i mean a fetch line would be fine all right i mean we're gonna keep this two nykthos <laughs> two nykthoses <laughs> <laughs> I think we only have two Nykthoses in the deck, but... Well, land in Utopia Sprawl. On green. Yo. <laughs> I picked up your Egon Stompy list in my LGS. It's difficult as a budget player to play 40 dollars decks into a deck playing four copies of Karth worth twice as much, but Egon has been so fun. Yeah, that's definitely the, the budget challenge, for sure. Sometimes it feels a little strange when... When your opponent plays a card that's worth more than your entire deck, but it does feel good when uh when it works and when you can actually compete with a deck that's way cheaper than your opponents. Ugh, well, all right, Trinisphere. Slow him down. One, two, three. Well, we shall see. Will we cast a five drop this game? Could it happen? I mean, I think Plowunder could be good. I feel like this deck took the mono green prison deck, which is sweet, and then maybe Tooth and Nail, which I don't know the last time Tooth and Nail was good, but, and mash them together, but the mashing together seems very clunky. I feel like there is, I mean, we know that mono green, mono green prison slash land destruction can be good. Like, we, we have had success with it ourselves. And I assume that there's probably a way to make Tooth and Nail good, but I'm not sure that this build does any of those things. Man, they're going to get Ghost Quarter and blow up our Utopia Sprawl land. And then we're going to cry. And why is a World Waker? World Waker? <laughs> World Waker. Probably better known as the Nissa that doesn't do anything. I mean, I guess untapping four forests could be good if we drew forests, but... I've been working on this mono blue temple list for the last two months. I just tasted Mythic last night. Where can I submit it uh, for against odds? Uh, well, you can give me a link in chat if you want to. Or uh, you can also email it to me. SaffronOliveFGDOldfish.com Oh, we gotta hope there's no Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter is real bad. I just wanna... I wanna cast one tooth and nail before this tree beds. That's where we've got to. We've given up on feeding the kids with this deck. Uh, the children, they're gonna be going to bed hungry. <laughs> with tooth and nail but i would like to at least cast a tooth and nail that would be spectacular opponent skyclave apparition i hope they hit the trinosphere and not our mana because our deck is ridiculously expensive opponent if they hit our mana and then ghost quarter this we're scooping then i mean all right yeah well GG's. <laughs> All right, opponent goes attacking. So I guess we're not straight up dead yet. Down to 16. No, 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 opponent. There's a Trinosphere. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, untapped for forest does make sense. It's looking awkward on this board, but... This Nissa does not seem great. Well. Non-creature permanent on top. Search for a creature. This is where Plot Wonder can be good. Oh, this makes me want to play the Mono Blue, the Mono Blue Prison deck. Hey Seth, just emailed you a deck. Well, hey, more Wallaroots, I guess. Just emailed you a deck list build around the commander you hated on during spoiler season. The commanders are Sonny and Radiant. With some Doc Deck Matters stuff to take advantage of Sonny's scry ability. Ooh, thank you, Pyro. I will uh, I will look forward to checking it out. 
opponent breeding pool. Tapped. The more I look at this, the more I think it definitely beats up on like four prowess decks with two turn two Trinisphere. Yeah, that's definitely. I mean, Trinisphere can just win games. Although Trinisphere is only two in the main deck and zero in the sideboard. I added another one to the sideboard, but the original list only had only had two. So I don't even know how consistently you're gonna have it on time. These Nixthoses are not looking uh not looking great. Well, we're drawing lands this game. That's something. So we play Nissa, but it just dies and does nothing. Yeah, yeah. There's not even really any point in playing it. I mean, I guess we can play it and I guess we can play it and make a four four to block Skyclave Apparition. Or maybe we just... Yeah, I mean, I guess we just play... Let's just untap. Play Wall of Roots. I mean, the good news is, if we ever get to 9 mana and draw Tooth and Nail, that is just immediately game-ending. Uh, how'd the previous deck do? Previous deck's great. I mean, we ended with a 3 and 2, but we really should have... There was one other one that we really should have won, so I feel like the deck, uh, that deck is even better than uh, its record was that league. Opponent Sajiri Steep. All right, protection. I wonder if this is a combo deck. Like the Retreat to Coral Helm, Knight of the Reliquary combo. Could be. Mono Blue Mutate Flash Tempo. Ooh. I have not really seen Mono Blue Mutate. Oh! Oh! One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, there goes all of our mana again. About it. Goes to combat. Well, that definitely that definitely looks uh, looks interesting. I haven't seen uh I haven't seen a deck that is exactly like that. That's kind of a cool, a cool idea. Also, uh, pretty budget friendly too. Opponent goes attacking, kills our stuff. All right, miracle draw. We are dead on board. We draw a utopia sprawl. All right. Well, this is probably the last chance. Wow, this deck has not come close to winning a game. I think this might go down as a. Uh, as, a, as the worst deck we've played in a long time. And we've played some doozies. We've played some doozies. <laughs> uh, ooh, reinstalling Arena to play? Do it, Aracalypse. Battle me. Uh, what do you think of 8-Rack in the modern meta with four bridges in the main? Um... It might be, it might be decent. I'm trying to think. The Blitz and Burn style decks are probably going to be a be a problem. Those are those seem like tough matchups, but probably fine against like probably fine against like the Heliod Company decks. Probably fine enough against the Amulet Titan Scape Shift style decks. Meh. Yeah. yeah, I'd be worried about Blitz and Burn, but. Well, this is our. This is probably our last chance, if we even get a last chance, to see if we cast a tooth and nail. Because I'm gonna have to go upload the podcast. But yeah, this this might this might be one that we have to uh, to rebuild. We might have to we might have to rebuild this one because yikes, it is clunky. If we even apparently no no one wants to play us. Um, what are the topics of today's podcast? We talked about the the organized play announcement, future of o uh, organized play, uh, that kind of stuff. The 
franchise slash casual conversation with a like Mark Rosewater saying ten percent of people uh, of players had ever played a Asian event. We talked about Magic Arena and wow, huh? This is weird. There's 1,100 people, and we're not finding a match. Um, we talked about Historic Anthology 5, and what we thought about Historic Anthology 5. We talked about uh, <laughs> the arena tournaments being the wrong format, answered some fish mail, so a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of different stuff. So the one stage thing is actually interesting. There was... I actually think, if I'm remembering this right, then the, when they were initially adding leagues to Magic Online, that there was there was talk of them having multi-stage leagues where you would like play in a, play in a league, and then if you did well in that league, you would like move on to stage two with other people who had also done well in their league, uh, and there would be multi-stage leagues. But it never, it never actually ended up being realized and happening. So I'm pretty sure that that's what that that's what that uh that refers to. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure that's what the story is on the stage thing. Who knows? Maybe maybe it'll still happen. I feel like there was some multi-stage limited events that they did, like multi-stage sealed, but it never I don't think there were ever multi-stage constructed events that I can remember. I'm pretty sure there weren't. But I don't know, it's possible I missed them. Come on, give us one more chance, Modo. One more chance to tooth and nail. Or else or else maybe what a what a depressing we did so good at the start of the stream with the Agmas Hospital because that next week, but then huh. Well, this is a good time for a reminder while we wait to see if we get one more match. But that reminder is viewer battle stream tomorrow, two Eastern time, standard historic. If you want to play, email me. Let me know that you want to play. Give me your arena name. Let me know if it's standard or historic you want to play. And we will uh, we'll have some fun tomorrow playing some viewer battles. I remember playing a top eight with Kalidus in my god pool. Uh, ooh, yeah, Kal Kalidus was, uh, was super good in limited. That would actually be kind of cool. Like, if you went 5-0 in a league, you get promoted to stage two, and then it's, like, single elimination with really good prizes. Like, and if you want a win streak of, like, 10 games, you'll get a, a huge amount of prizes. That would actually be pretty cool. Are you going to do a review for Historic Anthology 5? Uh, maybe. Oh, all right, we get our chance, our last chance. Uh, do you... Do you want a review of Historic Anthology 5? I think the hard part is... Well, this actually looks like a... A, a functional hand of, of magic cards. This might be the nut draw. The closest... Oh, no. What? That's a... I thought that was a tap water grave. That's a guild gate. Wow. We're guild gate tier. We're guild gate tier. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're killed, Gate Tier. <laughs> That's you tell Fizz Frog. <laughs> well, that's how high. That's how highly. Oh, I feel. I feel bad now that we're gonna move the acid was to our opponent's guild gate, and then we're gonna plow under their guild gate. And oh, this is this is gonna be brute. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. I feel so guilty. <laughs> oh, I, I legitimately, I le this I I say that sometimes, and I don't really mean it. This time I actually really do. I really do feel bad that we're crushing the dreams of. Oh, poor Space Lord. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Space Lord. <laughs>
<laughs> Space Lord just wanted to wanted to maze his end as someone who has played a lot of against who has played a lot of against the odds decks and has tried to do things like maze his end in modern. I know I know what it's like. I know how hard it is. I can I can feel Space Lord's pain. <laughs> I actually feel worse. I feel worse now that we won. I felt better when we were... I felt better when we were just, uh... Not casting any cards. Now I feel bad for just, like, wrecking the poor... The poor Gates person's day. <laughs> poor, poor little fella. Indeed. <laughs> I know we actually finally got our good draw, and it was against... It was against someone trying to play Gates. Yeah, we, we did it. All right. Can we cast it to... Well, I mean, we won, technically, kind of. I guess we get to finish the league now that... That match went so incredibly quick. Can we cast a tooth and nail? That is our hope and dream. There's no... There's no Utopia's Prowl, but we do have Wall of Roots into uh, Mumble Acid Moss. Maybe into Real Nizza. If you thought sees... Oh, okay, no thought sees. We really need this to live. We're just the deck needs more lands, I think. I think twenty is probably skimp in. Or card draw or something. I mean, we mauled to six and kept a hand with multiple ramp spells. I don't think you can be too I don't know if you can be too stuck on the We need to mulligan until we hit Arbor Elf Utopia's Brawl. Like, at some point, if you go to six, how far do you go? Like, is five cards and maybe hitting one of those better than... Oh, this transfer is going to be the real deal, I think. Land? Eh? Ooh, no. But, well, transfer is good. All right, opponent. Your spells are... Oh, please don't kill our, our wall of roots. We need a land. We need a land. Uh, this is, this is Tooth and Nail. Modern Tooth and Nail. No, the record is not zero and zero. I wish it was. <laughs> I would, I would gladly, I would gladly take a zero and zero. Opponent does have a land. Hits us. Well, we're not going to block. We need this Wall of Roots. We need, we just need a land. Land for Acid Moss, and we are... Hopefully off to the races. If this dies, then we're maybe locked under our own Trinisphere, which is awkward. About it. <laughs> hey, what's up, Trinisphere? <laughs> Good timing. Well, our opponent is really thinking. This Trinisphere must have ruined their, ruined their plans. Opponent. Oh, jeez. Land? All right. Well, for the sake of the podcast, we have now officially been locked under our own Trinisphere, and we will scoop it up. Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't think 20 lands is going to cut it with no card draw. There's just so many consistency issues. So I think, I think that's probably the the TLDR. Also, feel like the the curve is just super high. Like this pile's a little too big. This pile's a little too small. All right, <laughs> I blame you, Trinisphere. Yeah, this is it. This is the tooth and nail dream. It all comes down to this. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is a matchup that is especially good for for tooth and nailing. Because they have thought seizes and so forth. But we're going to give it a shot. Last shot, and then it's podcast time. All right. We will play first. We will mulligan uh, aggressively. Arbor Elf, Utopia's Brawl. Well, not Arbor Elf Utopia's Brawl, but Arbor Elf and Wallaroots. I mean, like, this is a hand I 
how can we mulligan this? I feel like this is a hand that we just have to keep. I don't think we can say we specifically have to have Arbor Elf and Utopia Sprawl to keep, or else or else we'll just be mulligan into zero way too often. Then we're if that's our standard, then we're essentially playing uh, the Tibalt's Trickery the Tibalt's Trickery Jank deck. Uh, yeah, this is a league. Why Wall of Roots over a one mana elf? It's a, it's a good question. I've been I've been asking many many questions about this deck myself. Um. All right. Well, here we go. Please don't kill our stuff, or else we can't cast anything. I think that's the other thing is our land count is so low. If our opponent deals with deals with our mana dorks, we just we don't get to play magic. <laughs> All right, Arbor Elf, go. Opponent, what do you got? Ooh, let me see. Let me see Swing for Zero. Ooh, Collected Conjuring. All right, there's Removal Spell 1. Opponent passes. Well, Wall of Roots. And Arbor Elf, go. Ooh, Conjuring Tokens is spicy. I might be worried about quasi duplicate. Ugh, opponent, shame, shame, shame. I might be worried about quasi duplicate with just uh, with just eight creatures. But that looks like a really fun idea. I like it. That seems uh, that seems spicy. And I mean, quasi duplicate is really cool when it works. Yeah, I think more three drops in the deck makes a lot of sense. More three drops. We have we have a bunch of one mana ramp, but then we don't really have any threes to ramp into. I think that's something that ramp decks don't think about enough is like the actual the mana curve of their ramp. Wow, they took the one that we can't cast. Interesting, interesting choice. I thought they'd take the one that we could cast, but... Uh, all right. Mm, yes, a boss. Out of here, Blood Crypt. One, two... We're getting there. That's five mana. We still gotta find the tooth and nail. Could this be the time? Could it actually happen? Hey, what's up, uh... Peso? How are you? Good to see ya. Potet cracks their one remaining land. Yeah. <laughs> Get in with Elf to double her... How do we deal the damage? I don't even remember the one that we did deal. If we actually get the Emrakul combo going, we will deal 30 all in one shot about it. Swamp and... Ooh, Dreadhorde Arcanist. We draw. Wall of Roots. I don't play Wall of Roots. Blow the land, get a forest, pass the turn. This card's so busted. <laughs> Arcanus is so busted. Phonet has a land, cracks it. One, two, three, four, five. We've done so much work, and we still only have seven mana. What about Truth and Tooth and Nail Tron? Young Pyromancer, bonus attacks and bolts and tokens. Busted. Well, the problem is this means we're losing mana, making it harder to to tooth and nail. All right. Well, wall one down. We draw. Oh, oh, yeah, well, pass the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Assuming there's not more removal to kill our stuff. But now we still gotta find the tooth and nail. Green Devotion seems like a, a good way to go about it. Opponent, go draw some cards. Ooh, call me, call me Hydra, eh? 
Spicy. Premium crux. That is a that is a lot of devotion. Yeah, that's a that's a cool take. I do kind of like that. Wow, opponent's gonna draw so many cards. So jealous. That is a that is a cool way to go about it. That might be better. Could you play your list? Uh oh, what one? What one was your list? Um, what one was your list? Arcanists never do anything on modern since modern. Yeah, we're not gonna block. Modern have a uh, bad Delver shell. Yeah, Arcanist is just a pretty absurd snowball card. If it sticks out, it is it is insane. Come on, gear. Yeah. <sighs> untap two lands. All right, I mean, our ramp plan has sort of succeeded. Come on, come on. Give us one shot, please. Pony just drew five cards, though. Double village rights. Uh, it would be sweet if we got to cast it, but my hopes are not super high. Ooh, Mono Blue Tron. We have not played, we have not played Mono Blue Tron in a... We haven't played much Tron at all, but Mono Blue Tron could be interesting. That is a... Wow. Excavated Wall. That has some, uh, some spicy... Some spicy creatures that I haven't seen. Is it planned to mill them out? <laughs> mill them out with the wall? Well, maybe we'll have to play some Mono Blue Tron as a boy. Opponent. I feel like the dream's about to be crushed. Sedgemore Witch. And Inquisition. Well, okay. This is it. This is it. I think we get one draw. We get one draw, and then that's it. Uh, We might do a Legacy Cube stream. It's got to be the tooth and nail. If the Magic Gods ever want to come through, this is their time to let us go out on a high note. Otherwise, I mean, that's it. After this turn, it's it's over. We're gonna lose our mana. We won't have a chance to do it. So it's gotta be it's gotta be this turn. Opponent attacks the Garrick. Attacks the Garrick. Attacks the Garrick. Okay, one draw. One draw for Tooth and Nail. We could see it in action. Opponents going off with their witches. Yeah. Oh wait, do we lose Garrick? Oh. Hmm. Maybe we, do we even get one draw? We might not. One, two, three, four, five. Well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I think we're gonna be a mana short anyway. <laughs> Well, it is what it is. Is it too, if it's tooth and nail, then it's the rubbids. That's eh, a forest. All right. Well, yikes. Okay. So what do we learn today? What do we learn today? And then I got to go upload the podcast. We learned that this deck is not very functional. Uh, it needs some work. It needs some work. It's a cool archetype. Uh, it makes me a little sad to see mono green land destruction uh, be so incredibly clunky with uh, with this version with tooth and nails and whatnots. Uh, we might have to come back to this one because I I know mono green land destruction is good. That deck has been good for us multiple times, but this tooth and nail thing maybe they should be separate. Maybe it should be playing mono green land destruction and tooth and nail on its own rather than trying to mash them together because that didn't go well. On the other hand, Yagmas Hospital it is competitive, it is strong. We finished three and two. Could have easily got another win. I think this deck's actually really fun and very powerful. So. Oh, on that note, the one damage league. Yeah, that the one damage league where our only win was the poor Gates player. 
<laughs> that, that was it. At least we can beat Gates. But on that note, everyone, I got to screw you off. Upload the podcast. We'll be back 21-ish hours from now. Viewer battle streams. If you want to play, again, email me. SarahFanellofMTGOFish.com. Let me know. Replay YouTube this week. Find the old streams. Normal YouTube Budget Magic podcast coming out shortly. And one more reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And if you need some magical cards, you can get them at CardKingdom.com. Even get a free MTG Goldfish sticker. Let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up. Most importantly, thank you to all of you for hanging out. Wins or loss. I appreciate y'all. Y'all are amazing and awesome. We'll be back to have more fun tomorrow. Uh, Yeah, thanks again for being amazing. I really appreciate it and I'll see you tomorrow.